Let's go. We are all this domestic terrorists. That's right. Ladies and gentlemen. That's right. We are all domestic terrorists. That's right. We're going to Cedar Rapids. To chill. Man, this coffee's crazy. You should try one of these. What are you drinking? I'm just chilling in Cedar Rapids. It's like a donut house, like a K-cup thing. Oh, I hate those. You know about this? Dude, bro, that literally gives me like PTSD flashbacks to like working at a, like a startup where that's that's it, the, the sweet creamy one. Oh no, I've never had that. Yeah, this, I, I, you haven't had this because this is crazy. Can you make it? But I don't like no no I don't like sweet and creamy coffee anyway. I don't until I break my fast like a little bit later in the day. Oh I don't have God, any sweets. Bro. Don't oh my god me, okay? You're wearing a large t-shirt this morning. Don't fucking oh my god me. He came in. He came in thinking I wouldn't notice. Like he just like showed up with a large t-shirt. I can't even see you. Don't don't stand sideways. I'm in my large area. I have You're becoming leave. you're becoming invisible. <laughs> well, I have this rack of clothing that I have, that I have there. Yeah. And uh, I told Lena, "Listen. Extra I need large I need larges." Large. Yeah, XL's too big, man. That's it's, too. I was down. I was at two XL. I was almost to three XL. Yeah, I mean to that. Yeah, I I see it. Thank you. What are the haters gonna say when they when they can't say fat it's man bad? Fat. Okay, fair. That's fat, true. Always fat. That's true. I mean, we're we're talking about the intellectual problems of people who look at Sneeko and go like, "That's a masculine alpha dog." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, they, versus. They, I don't think they'll ever. I don't think they'll ever move move past the fat man bad. Yeah. Um, but welcome everybody. It's leftovers. Thank you, Hassan. You know, I thought I'm, we were canceled. I, I, I thought we were done. Uh, and then, you know, I got the memo, I guess, we like that a, we weren't. We had we tried to have a socialist revolution. It got bloody. Uh, love died. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately, the Pinker, the Pinkertons he was got love. He was, yeah. he was skewered by Dan. Yeah. <laughs> Rip to the goat. <laughs> the Bolshevik. No, but I'm I'm <laughs> going to abstain from having this conversation today. Let's just it's been two episodes. Let's just get back to the I mean, there's oh. there's a lot happening in the world. I'm always happy and comfortable ha Damn, having these dude. conversations. That coffee is not good. You're insane. <laughs> Bro, just try it. Bro, you said the donut hole coffee is what good. What is it called? It's like no, I know exactly what it is. It's like a it's like a like you a don't orange know, and you it's like a donut, it. right? It's like a sprinkly donut on the top of the K cup. I know <laughs> yeah, exactly what it, it is. It. It's like the staple in every startup. Try donut. It. No, but okay. you said you haven't tried it. No, bro. I have a Nespresso You're machine. Lying. Okay, I have a Nespresso machine. That shit is like literally primo. Cr yeah, exactly. That's exactly try what I'm thinking. It, of. No, just have a sip. I I drink from the fountain of gods. Okay, I drink the the nectar. Make him one, please. Uh, yeah, I'm used to. I, I I put prime in all of the water fountains around my uh, house. Yeah. <laughs> prime, uh, prime water fountain. Yeah, oh, <laughs> man, that shit sucks, bro. We're, got, we're, they sent us a bunch of them. It's so sweet. It's just it's so sweet, and like you don't yeah. want when it's artificially sweetened, then you really don't want it too sweet. You are you are actually I do agree with you on that. It, it is it is too sweet. Prime. Artificial sweetener uh, does. Need to strike a delicate balance. That's it, and they're and they're and not. Diet Mountain Dew has struck that balance, and so is Diet Coke. Uh, Prime, so. not so much. So well, I've been at, um, playing and diversifying myself in the Zero game. And I'll say this: Dr Pepper Zero is premium. Dr Pepper Zero Cherry, bro. They brought all the flavors together. I, I, don't, I don't fuck with any Dr Pepper. I've I've drank it like one time in my entire life. I think you should revisit it. It's I've really taken good. a sip. But but then here really? I tried the the Zero Mountain Dew, and here's my problem with it. It's not carbonated enough. Like I oh, pour it out, and it has significantly less carbonation than the other colas that I enjoy. And I like Mountain Dew, but I just think they need to bubble it up. That's actually a very interesting take. I've mm. never thought about it that way. I don't really mind it. I love the the radioactive look and feel to yeah. it. No, There's like something about it, like. I don't know what it is. I feel like I'm a child and I'm drinking like Nuka Cola or something. <laughs> it's well, awesome. That color is fucking from another world, man. But they did it. They do it. And we love that, huh? Yeah. And it's illegal oh, yeah, in Europe, too. which makes me feel much better about it. <laughs> Root Beer Zero is definitely goaded. Okay. If Cream Soda Zero, goaded the fuck where are you up. Okay, if you're in the zero, zero game, why are you they're touching? They're all there, bro. You're they touching the weirdest shit. Like, no, you got Diet Ginger, you got Canada Dry. Diet Canada Dry is basically... I don't do that. It's top shelf. Okay. Diet Canada Dry, no caffeine, top shelf, okay? 
Oh. Uh, Diet Sunkist does have caffeine. I used to think that it didn't, but it does. Mm. That's pretty decent, too, if you want something with a little orange flavor to it. Try this. Just take um, a sip. Sprite Zero is very carbonated. Mind, I'm, like, I'm just going to take a little sip of it. Just take a clean sip. Like, a give it a clean sip. Mm. One pinky <laughs> up. Is that how we're doing it? I mean, yeah, it, it's it's it, all right. It tastes like sweetie. It, it does pie. taste like... Um, yeah, it tastes like you're eating like a glazed donut. That's a 10. You're drinking a glazed donut. Thank you. Exactly. That's, That's my ten. point. That's a 10. Decent. Um, but like, I think all the zeros, so like this is a really a fantastic breakthrough in technology. Yeah. With the zeros. I can't disagree. <laughs> it's just amazing. Revolution. I mean, it's Dude, amazing. Dude, I, I agree. We're probably going mean, to get like gonna ass get the cancer. Nobel Peace Prize for that? We're going to get ass cancer in like... 15 years or whatever, but I, mm. I've I've realized like that's a L I will take because man, that shit is so good. Or maybe it's not bad for you at all. Not that it matters. I'm gonna drink it either way. Maybe I yeah, hope I'm I'm still drinking cancer and die, you son of a bitch. I'll cut your <laughs> right, throat chill. I'll come to your house and kill your children. Jesus what is Christ. wrong with him, man. In the words of Donald Trump, I'll still keep I'll I'll keep drinking that garbage. Mm -hmm. You know? <laughs> so let's see, what do we have today? Oh, just a short reminder to our uh audience. Tickets are on sale tomorrow for our next live show for members. The be steamies. You think it's going to sell out? I don't know. I don't think it's going to sell out. You always out. say that, Nobody bro. a lot more tickets. You, you always say that. And it then it always sells. Venue. And then there's like a thousand posts in the Reddit being like, I I had to fight someone with a shank under a bridge to be able to get my ticket. Fupa Troopers, have you guys had the same experience? Listen, I think that it will sell, but I think that the non-members are going to get a crack at it this time. That's all. Which I'm is saying. fine. I don't know. I, I don't, don't think, think so. that is going to happen. I don't happen think so. At I all. think you're 3,300 tickets. That's going to sell. Yeah. Lot of tickets. Wait, didn't we sell the last one in like seconds? But it was let. Well, it was it was uh, yeah, it was more than half the amount of tickets. Uh, God damn! At the ace, oh, then we're selling this time. Do you want mine? Seconds. <clears throat> yeah, slide it over here. But if you also take into consideration what was on the, the waiting list for that, I mean, come. There on. was a big waiting list too. So yeah, I don't know. Maybe, maybe. Oh yeah, and people that are asking uh, what day it's going to be, it'll be on December seventeenth. Oh yeah, and I need to say this here because we're all the yes, all box office sales go to the crew. Thank you, everybody who says I'm. Let's Catholic. fucking go. Thank you. Thank and you. as a result of that, I just want to warn everybody, this is going to be a very minimalistic <laughs> show. We're not going to spend any money <laughs> right. on it, really. That's right. I don't think we'll stream it, you know. Mm -hmm. That's it's right. It's a real low-key affair. More of a Q&A. Well, Q &A. well we, a were and listen, we were discussing ticket prices, and ultimately I was like, listen, it's kind of up to you guys, because it's your money at the end of the day. It's true. It's true. But um, we all advocated for uh, more affordable prices, because we, at the end of the day, all care about the people. Isn't that right, Dave? Yeah. I guess we should say, too, it is a more expensive venue. Um, not, like, radically more expensive, but the tickets are a little bit pricier than that. Just place. a little bit more, though, right? It's seeming a, a, the big, seeming it, a little socialist there, dude. I don't like this <laughs> profit sharing or, like, you know, decision-making process where the I've workers also have that. a say. I've literally it's always true. done mm. Ethan, Ethan has mm. given us a cut of all of the live show proceeds for, what a fucking for all the ones What a fucking fake, dude. Well, people think that they assume that, like, the conversation I'm having, I'm literally talking about my business. I'm not. I know. You fake talking about, but whatever, let's not get into it. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's gonna be, yeah, we're going to get sucked dude. into it again. We're not going to have a show. But so, I'm, let's see. Uh, Biden impeachment inquiry. Uh, oh, this is exciting. Dan, uh, you'll be monitoring this. Uh, this is breaking news, right? Uh, the impeachment inquiry? Yeah, I was watching a little bit before the show. Um, it was all the typical shit, Hunter Biden, yeah, blah, blah, Justice blah. being served. Typical, uh, not so typical for the American Congress. Right. Justice is rarely ever served. Oh my God, they have my favorite, Professor Turley on. Yeah, uh, actually, they're already... Let me go back and find it. There already was a pretty funny exchange where um, this guy, Professor Turley, is one of the Republican witnesses. Um, well, it's funny because he's not a Republican witness. He's just... A Fox News legal analyst. Dude, don't you mean his uh, accreditation? No, he, j Professor James Turdley. Okay, he is literally Turdley. <laughs> I assume, I assume that they're just gonna run like everyone who's been on Fox News. Like they're just gonna have the Fox News brigade at the at Congress. Listen, this is an official the Trump proceed proceeding sanctioned by the Senate and with with the full full authority of the. Congressional hearing that they're doing the right? American government would never have a shitty ass congressional hearing for no reason other than like, you know, funsies Oh wait, hold on. 
actually, that's not true, right? Committee. This is just a couple of people Without doing pretend. Order. Chair, I recognize Mr. Frost from Florida for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. An impeachment inquiry is a grave undertaking that is supposed to be in response okay. to evidence of a crime. Okay. Mr. Chairman, you have questions. Many of my colleagues Dr. on the other side of the aisle. That sounds like a Batman villain. I like that. That is a Batman villain. No, that's that's Maxwell Frost. He's the he's the Gen Z. Is. He's, he's the Gen Z uh, uh, Florida uh, Democrat. That's sick. I love Mr. Frost because his name is Frost. Is first of all sick. Oh, noted that. We need Mr. Ice. Special impeachment ink. Sorry, that was me. I'm, my bad, my bad. Christmas yeah, is I'm, one day. I'm trying to find a specific part I saw when I was kind of half listening this morning. One of the Democrats jumped in and was questioning Mr. Turley, and he was bringing up his uh, history as a lawyer um, defending a bunch of Mormons, uh, polygamists in Utah. And specifically, I guess he, he went to bat for this guy who's a convicted pedophile. And, oh, uh, and, and Turley responded with something to the effect of, um, well, I admit I do have libertarian leanings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, Tucker Carlson did that too. Fuck, what's wait, his name? Um, that, that statement needs to be analyzed a little bit. <laughs> no, no, right. no, Tucker Carlson is also... Well, I'm trying to find it right at now. At the time, like, every conservative shock jock in the nation was, like, actually defending this guy for facilitating child marriages. Fuck, what's his name? I can't believe... The chat mm. will probably help on this. Let's crowdsource it. Let well, see. besides that, we'll be checking in on that. Um, <laughs> oh, the shutdown. How is this happening again, man? This is embarrassing. Government's going to shut down. Uh, you know, it's very real. That's a real thing. Uh, shut up! That's a real thing that, that has to happen. For uh, sure. Let's see. Well, let me check the, the stock market. That's how I know if it's happening or not. S&P 500. Let's see. No, it's, they never. It's the, up, so I don't think it's happening. No, the, it it doesn't matter. It, it like even when it shuts down, sometimes the stock market doesn't respond. At this point, the stock market is just propped up by vibes, and the vibes are always good in America. That's so. That's right. That's true. All right, but let's talk about some fun stuff before we get into that. For example, Jordan Peterson, friend of the show, is launching a college, and this is fantastic because, I like, yours. I think he's well equipped to be a headmaster, a principal, an educator. And he's in a really good state of mind to be, um... Warren Jeffs was the guy, by the way, I'm seeing. Warren, Warren. Jeffs, yes. Warren on yes. kids, the... Let's discuss what we're doing. Panties. <laughs> Warren Jeffs facilitated child uh, marriages between uh, members of his cult, including between children and, like, full-blown old-ass adults. What's your argument? Um, <laughs> and then Tucker Carlson and many of, like, the conservative libertarian sickos at the time... Straight up went out the bat for him. Uh, constantly went into like deflections about like, well, there's a difference between child arranged marriages and like child rape. You know, like what, as how though. How old are we talking? Uh, I think like 12, 13. It was thirteen. Was the girl he? Uh, yeah, was uh, convicted of. What's the difference wording. exactly? Well, that's well, crazy. They're trying 13? to find the nuance. Okay, thirteen. Yeah, they're trying to they're trying what to the find fuck? legally permissible ways to fuck thirteen year olds, which is exactly what they're doing. Uh, it's love? the classic like actually it's a febophilia argument. You know what I mean? It's just well, that's even thirteen is cutting it close on that argument. <laughs> the Jeff's family vlog. This is actually I saw this advertised on Fox News. It's pretty cool. Uh, new. It's about a Mormon family. They're really wholesome and it's just about the inner workings of how what one man has you know like twenty five. Oh, you didn't know he had a YouTube silly. channel. Oh my god, I thought this was real for a second. Dude, what the hell's happening? Yeah, I, some sex I'm next was... up on the I'm next up on uh, fucking blocking Ethan on Twitter thinking it's the, the fake Tom Ethan. Got yeah. yeah, no, this is some Mormon uh cult where he was like F, uh screwing kids and he was trading kids like like currency you to wanna, other guys. Dan, the, you can very cult. easily find Mormon. Tucker Carlson defending him, by the way. Like if you look up Tucker Carlson, Warren Jeffs, like he he very clearly says like, well, you know, what did he do that's illegal anyway? I mean, that's the country. Like, basically. I'd like to see that. Uh, my internet is not working on my computer for some reason. It's, like, very slow. All right, well, in the meantime, let's let's get a look at Jordan's pitch for his online university. Um, let's take a look. Him and his daughter, Dragon Energy, Michaela herself. It's just very slow. With Peterson Academy. Oh. What if we could make getting a degree 95% less expensive? Yeah. That's pretty funny target yeah like, 95 yeah that's easy when you have no infrastructure building it's just online you don't have accredited you don't do accreditations you don't have real professors shit it should be even less than 95 percent 
It'd be ninety nine percent, probably a decimal. Probably be too. free. I think the real uh, cynical reason behind this is because thank you. Uh, in the culture war, like everyone is always going after the the abolition. Well, Republicans want to abolish the Department of Education. That's number one, right? That's the first priority. That's why they always go with the school choice narrative. That's why I always like try to funnel uh, public funds back into charter schools. They want to destroy the teachers' unions. Um, and now the culture war has gotten to a point where like schools are so under attack by the Republican Party and it's so well established that like public school is where you learn homosexual Marxism. Yeah. That um, like the Republican boards of education in states are comfortable giving money to Prager U, right? Wait, this Prager happened. Gets government money? But you didn't know this? Place. It's just a website. It's Prager a University like courses channel. are now being utilized. The kids, specifically Prager University kids, is being utilized in the state of Florida, in the state of Oklahoma. And if I'm not mistaken, New Hampshire is one of the other do we uh, have, states that's like slowly implementing it, like phasing it in. Wait, do we have an example of what they're using from Prager U? Yes, they do. Media uh, Matters did a deep dive into all the Prager U kids stuff. I've looked at it on the stream as well. It is disastrously bad. It's just some dumbass with a YouTube channel but advocating for incest. I don't uh, understand. There isn't it, any. <laughs> it's worse than that. It is uh, a dumbass with a YouTube channel advocating for incest. With Adult uh, incest. <laughs> with animation. Let and me like, see, let me watch one of these to see what's happening here in publicly funded. Uh, I'll try and uh, I'll try and pull one here. Give me a second. Yeah, I mean that that is pretty cynical. I think Jordan just trying to get paid on the backs of this sentiment you're saying. Yeah, there's like a Robert E. Lee one, which is pretty funny. I think that what they're like, they get together uh, two generals and like they're like, yeah, you were just misunderstood. <laughs> no we just had a simple disagreement, but I really respect you. <laughs> Robert E. Lee. I and mean, I learned a lot about Robert E. Lee in school. Like, you know, he was, you know. Good guy, misunderstood. He was a great general, they said. And we need statues of him up uh, all over. Outside of courthouses. Uh, every courthouse. He's yeah. a man of the law. And um, we need to basically uh, worship him. That's He was upholding the law. <laughs> right. <laughs> and law is always right. It's the blue line, baby. <laughs> yeah. He was upholding uh, heritage and not hate. 95% can offer a better quality experience along the way. Why wouldn't it be good to wait, did you, wait, Let's get it. everybody wait, in wait, a wait, white, sorry, empty void a and talk did, about birds, evolutionary science. Did you put the music or did they do that? I did not do that. Let me see if it's on his channel. Wait. This is him. This is him. This is all That's him. The, the ominous ass music that makes it look like they're, they're a university for, for villains? Hold on, let me go back. <laughs> Bro, this is very like, Joker ass. <laughs> it, it literally looks like, what are they teaching? Like, how to be a Bond villain? What the fuck's happening here? <laughs> Let's hear, let, let me hear again. That would be sick. It's like, we're going to undercut you by 95% and offer a better... That's crazy ominous. It's like hitting that that uh, apocalyptic cello. Nice, good. I feel like hey, conservatives the are on their villain shit. Like they they are just straight up like, no, we're the bad guys, and that's cool. You gotta have the good and the bad. So I'll be the bad guy. You've You're made stupid, me this way. Bad. Let's see. He's martyring himself. Experience along the way. Why wouldn't it be good to provide everybody, at least in principle, with access to the best lectures? You know, you might think, why Wait. should you be generally educated? Because otherwise you're going to be a useless... Why is this like a fever dream? Like they're cutting it more and more like he's rambling. It reminds me of like Willy Wonka in the fucking, the boat ride of madness. <laughs> this is unnecessarily scary why for like, <laughs> for for like lectures that are almost <laughs> always going to revolve around like, transgenders are actually morally wrong and you need to stop. You need to stop doing that. No more wokeness. I mean, what do you think they talked about in ev evolutionary biology? If you look at the bird, there's not one transgender bird. Take a look. Yeah, this is 100% uh, going to be uh, uh, a biological predeterminism 101 that, like, you know, that, that subtly gets into, it's like, race realism. It's 95% cheaper. It'll, it'll subtly get into race realism, but, like, not fully invest <laughs> itself in it and just be like, yeah, I mean, we're just... Uh, biologically predetermined to be uh to and we've evolved in a way to be uh right-wing capitalists <laughs> it's just normal it's good um natural this is this is phenomenal let's see 
at least in principle, with yes. access to the best lectures. You know, you might think, why should you be generally educated? Because otherwise you're going to be what a useless, fuck? resentful, bitter, pointless, counterproductive love. Which that's is not hilarious because that's who he is. I and mean, he's been educated. Well, he's rich, so he's so, right. Sometimes when you're rich, you're he, just right by default. Yeah, okay. Not, not, if, you're, you're not if you're a socialist. <laughs> Then right. you're wrong. He's not, and he's then not. you're wrong, and yeah, he definitely he's is. He's pretty far. He literally yeah. said Nazis were worse than socialists, and and it's not even a contest. The other day, he said it's not even a contest. Like we can't yeah. even compare them. Yeah, he was like by by. He's like it's <laughs> it's really hard to be worse what? than the Nazis, but the socialists somehow did it. Is which he just was talking like, about USSR, probably. But even then, it's just like pure ahistorical like nonsense that literally borderlines uh, uh, Hitler apologia at that point. It's like. <laughs> If you are looking at a situation, on the one side you have the Nazis, on the other side you have the guys who killed the most Nazis, and you say, the guys who killed the most Nazis are actually worse than the Nazis, you're just doing well, Holocaust apologia. Yeah, the USSR was pretty bad, though. I, I agree, <laughs> but there's a major difference between... What the fuck? Sorry. Um, there, there's a major difference between uh, uh, saying, like, due to uh, political... Due to authoritarian struggles, due to political struggles, due to uh, economic struggles, lack of planning and the like, that uh, an entire system that was trying to collectivize over the course of, <laughs> you know, uh, 100 years in comparison to the 400 years of collectivization that the Western capitalist nations have engaged in with slavery and, and brutal conquest in, in the form of colonialism, um, the, there's going to be hiccups. Not, not all of it is excusable for the record. Obviously, it's not. But, like, comparing that to deliberate ethnic cleansing and then saying the other side is worse, especially it's when, not, like... It's not a, it's not an argument I would necessarily want to put out there, you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, especially at a time when the fucking Canadian parliament literally had a straight-up SS guy. Did you see that? No. Oh, you didn't? Oh. You didn't hear about that? No. <laughs> it was a big yikes. Wait, the, what happened there? The Canadian parliament, uh, the speaker of the parliament, brought... A actual Waffen SS Galicia division. What? Ukrainian uh, volunteer Nazi that's 98 years old. Oh shit. And everybody gave him a standing ovation. Wait, 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 wait. Because of Ukraine? Because they they missed the point on that one a little bro, bit. They, a little bit. Bro, they prom, they presented it. Yo, this guy was like, I never thought I would get a standing O in yeah, no. society. This is beautiful. I'm crying. No, Nazis in that moment he was like, Oh my god, we lost the battle, but we won the war. <laughs> What's happening? <laughs> yeah, he actually yeah. uh he resigned as a result of it uh yesterday. Yeah. The the speaker <laughs> the spe Wait, I want to see the clip of this. <laughs> this is such a up. Kevin James meme uh, face that he's making. Yeah. When you accidentally Bro, give a standing he, that's, to a wall. This guy's in his writing, right? Uh and he's like, Oh, uh, you know, this is my guy. I, I want to celebrate him as like a Ukrainian veteran, right? So he presents him in parliament as such. He says, We have a wonderful, you know, bold, beautiful, brilliant Ukrainian veteran. Who fought in World War II and up to this point, you're like, say, okay, great. Who, who, who side? Uh -oh. No, he did say it. Oh, he, said he literally Nazi said veteran. he fought in World War II against Russia. And <laughs> oh, that's at yeah, that okay. moment, everyone's like, wait a minute, what against Russia? Nice try, bro. Yeah, and, this man has been against Russia his whole life. <laughs> yeah, and and it's kind of funny because like now the Polish officials are Yo! they want to extradite him. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Kind of, uh, kind of fucked him over. Israel here. needs to send Mossad after him, man. Dude, it's like, it's Dude, like that's awesome. This guy volunteered in the in the SS Foreigner Brigade, like went to Nazi Germany, trained there, went back, talked about in a blog post for Ukrainian veterans. Yeah, in Canada because there's like a big diaspora, right? Uh, wrote in 2010 that the Holocaust, the years in which the Holocaust were happening were some of the best years of his life. <laughs> yeah, those are his glory days, man. <laughs> if only I could go back to those good times, simpler times. Yo, he's like, um, he's like Nazi rookie trading card, mint condition, boy. Yeah, yeah, he's a PSA 10, dude. For sure. <laughs> he's just, you. it's crazy. Here's um, the... Cam just sent it. Hold on, I gotta see this. So did this guy who brought him out who resigned, he... He said he didn't realize. He didn't no, realize. No, they, they all know. They, it's, it's fucking ridiculous. But dude. then he resigned, so I'm confused about his what the fuck he thought would happen. 
we have here in the. I mean, is it possible? It's just a team. massive fuck up. Like, no, I know, I know exactly what it is. It covers. I can't imagine he would willingly bring a Nazi out. No, they're okay. Well, because it, then he resigned. Why would he the, resign? The Ukrainian uh, diaspora or the Canadian Ukrainian diaspora, and uh, it's it's like. Uh, questionable uh figures or depictions of of uh nazis is is not this is not the first time it's happened there's two <clears throat> different places where like um they've built memorials like like a lot of times when you look at like victims of communism memorials like they do this sneaky thing where they add the nazis in there as well as like victims of communism and not necessarily like victims of famine or whatever you know mm -hmm. what i mean it's like mm -hmm. literally they will put like actual nazis um, in two different instances in Canada, uh, there were two memorials. I forget the exact names uh, of the of the two different memorials, but like both of them were were on the Nazi side. In in one of the districts, they wrote literal Nazi memorial mm -hmm. on it in red graffiti paint, and the police launched a hate crime investigation. Huh? Oh. The police launched a hate that crime is a hate investigation. Crime, well, not to find who group. defiled. <laughs> no, literally. And then when the media covered it, they immediately dropped it because they were like, "Oh fuck, what, what are we doing?" And then in another in another district, uh, there was a progressive journalist in Canada who was writing about these but like. Is it possible the police didn't know it was a Nazi and they just thought they were being like derogatory. They're like, "He's not a Nazi." I mean, <laughs> they, maybe they should have done an investigation before launching one. The right. I mean, to just Google the it. Said, I mean, it, they, were, they were trying to tell them on the. But but my point is, um, I think this is a lot of like anti-communist, anti-socialist fervor in the Western world that like uh, gets a lot of people swept up and and causes them to forget like what the alignment looks like uh, uh, in regards to who you are offering support to because like. Oh, they're an anti-communist. I'm an anti-communist. Like we're we're friends. We're allies. You know what I mean? That that's usually uh, the attitude, I'm without really right. realizing like, oh fuck, this guy's like straight up Nazi because those were the major anti-communists, right? You know, like uh, the <coughs> early the early German generals that were brought on to NATO. Actually, I, I've been hearing uh, whispers of um, a celebration honoring the greatest anti-Russian war warrior, Hitler. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, we're 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 still removed from that. I think he's still seen as like the ultimate evil, you know. Luckily, holy shit. So let me see this. This dude really came up here in this goofy outfit to defend a Nazi. Let's see. Bro, some people were trying to fucking. Yeah, why wasn't he wearing his? He was wearing his goofy outfit. Why wasn't the veteran wearing his uniform? When do you ever see <laughs> veterans? True. When do you ever see veterans in an official setting not wear their uniform, Ethan? A question one must True. ask. Usually they they're proud of that. Yeah. Want to show it off? Why does this man have two bookmarkers on his on his chest? <laughs> That's the, uh, the rock <laughs> coat. That is like actually. You want to go down? Um, you want to shout out to D Workwear uh, on Twitter. Uh, that is like the I original uh, elite outfit play. where suits and ties apparently were the commoner's garb, and this was the original out outfit of uh, elites. We should we should go back. Yeah, uh, I think the he looks high great. neck the high neckline frock, uh, and and whatever that good. fucking tie thing is. All right, let's see what this guy has to say. Ukrainian Canadian world veteran from the Second World War who fought. The Ukrainian independence against the Russians. Say what? <laughs> mm. Okay, he's bro. No wait, one. Wait, he fought for Ukrainian independence against the Russians. Against the Russians. The Nazis. Tr was that something they did for Ukraine or something? Okay, that's even funnier and even more sad. Uh, yes and no. There were Ukrainian nationalists uh, of varying different backgrounds that thought. Oh, we can just align with the Nazis yeah. and they'll give us independence. And the Nazis were like, you're a Slav dog. What are right. you talking about? You're not even human in my eyes. So they literally arrested half of the fucking Ukrainian nationalists, although they were still uh, pr facilitating in the uh, in the uh, pogroms, uh, you know, uh, doing the Holocaust and also a lot of anti-Polish, uh, like they killed a fuck ton of Polish people, too.
This guy is truly really like they're I, looking to extradite. The worst part about <laughs> this, this guy has no. He's like, what is happening? This is cr awesome. The worst part about like, the I story, wanted to kill all these people. The worst part about the story is that like obviously Ukrainians. Uh, what was I think the official number is like an insane number of Ukrainians uh, were in the front of the the Red Army. Like Ukrainians were fighting the Nazis right at the time. A much smaller number were aligning with the Nazis, and these motherfuckers still somehow find a way to be like, yeah, that's those are the guys that we're gonna prop up here. Is this our boy here who's being honored? Yeah. Yeah. He's got his own Wikipedia look, look page, how, bro. Well, I, I think they made the Wikipedia <laughs> after, but Dude, they got the they got the lightning bolts, they got the Swazi. Is that Kanye? Yeah, you can't even do like No, no, no. Like <laughs> No, it's not. <laughs> That's somebody else. <laughs> you can't even do like the, the clean Vermock theory, which I don't agree with anyway, but you can't even do that for him because he literally volunteered for the Waffen SS vo Foreigner Brigade. <laughs> I'm sorry, but like this is proof among this is proof there's no God. This Nazi lived to be 20, 98, and then to be honored in the Canadian Parliament. Henry Kissinger, also alive and well. <laughs> All right. You know? Okay, that's true. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, no, Dick five Cheney. Year old, five year olds are dying of leukemia. Yeah. And Dick Cheney, who's literally looks like the human embodiment of cardiovascular disease. He doesn't have disease. a heart. He doesn't have a heart. <laughs> he, oh, he got the infernal engine? Yeah, he does not have a heart. You, like, Dan. there is like eight different batteries pumping blood in his, in his body. Yeah, that's good. And also, big penis. Has We've a fat cock. Yeah, he has a fat cock. Where did that room? How do we know that? that? I've seen it. What? I don't Cheney. know why I said it like I've seen it in person, but I've. I've Wait, there's a no, photo. we did talk about this on the show. Wait, was it in his pants? It was just a. It was just like there was a, there was a picture where you could kind of see his bulge, and it was like. Um, the that rumor is, is really that uh, Dick, Dick Cheney. Wait, Paul, send me that. So Dick Cheney is like of not a great background. Like originally, he's like a lineman, uh, you know, putting up uh, electrical and telephone poles and stuff, and he's like a Maybe fucking not a great background. Like, his background is not uh, similar to, like, a lot of the elites. He, he uh, came up, he's a working class yeah, he's, guy. Yeah, he's a working class guy who pedigree. was, like, a real, and, and a real piece of shit, too. Like, he would get into fucking fights. Like, he's gotten arrested for drunk driving at a time when, like, Let me see it's this. basically legal. Can we, um, dude, bro, are you sure that's his pack? It looks like his diaper's hanging. Like, I have kids, no, no, and that's what that's it looks his, like when their diaper no, gets that's too cock, full. Man. That's his fucking <laughs> There's cock. no you way. Know? That's like a 10 I like the cock. theory that he shit his pants, too. Dude, I'm willing no to go along shot. with that. Yeah. Okay, listen, cock. listen, listen. That's his he, dick. In college, no. when he was in college. Why is it so, it's so <laughs> hefty? In college, he used to uh, pose in the nude for art students, and they used to call him Big Dick Cheney. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Wait, so there's like documented evidence of it. Yeah, that's like the room. They saw it. Zoom out. Who's he talking to? Why is he flexing on this the ice like, cream man, dude? This ice cream guy. Like, like, bro, <laughs> you got to dress. That's a soda jerk. That's what that is. That's how old he is. This yeah. man is like. He was old when there were soda jerks. Yeah, that's like a dying thing now. There's no, there's Go no down. more soda jerk. Let me look at this. <laughs> Don't you all think that there's two. It looks like he's torqued like. It's too, mm. it's too, there's too much mass. Or why do you think his heart can't pump any fucking blood into oh. his brain and, and the rest of his body? His cock's too fat. He's Dyfie's suffering. too full, bro. I don't know. He's suffering from success, dog. That's what's going on. Oh, All right, big dick Cheney. Right. Shrek cock. Well, he's got a big dick to fuck Iraq with and all the, That's right. you know what I mean? Thank you. Thank you. True. So anyway, back to this fucking idiot. <laughs> and continues to support the troops today. What a guy. Even at age of 98. What a guy. Standing O. Dude, everyone did it. I support Zelensky, the, uh, uh, like every motherfucker in there was like, hell yeah. Wait, Zelensky's in there? Yeah. Oh, they didn't know, right? I mean, they didn't know. Like, nobody thought Zelensky's about it. Because Zelensky's Jewish, he wouldn't, you know what I mean? That's what I mean, though. Like, you didn't fucking think about it when he says, like, he's an anti-Russian nationalist? Like, what are we, what are we doing here? Well, I think that you I hear that, I immediately have red flags. Like, uh, like alarm bells are sure. ringing in my right. brain. I'm like, what? Wait, but for sure they wouldn't expect him <laughs> to pull out like a Nazi to honor. <laughs> Standing O. <laughs> Meanwhile, dude, he's doing the Heil Hitlers, bro. No, no, he isn't. Look no, at him up here. No, he's not. Yo, he's going Heil Hitler. No, he's not. Heil Hitler. Look at that. His hand. <laughs> yeah. Force wait. of habit. The muscle memory is coming back a little bit. <laughs> Wait till you find out that Kyle he, Hitler. He's like, I cannot believe this shit. I <laughs> he's, yeah, he's like, he, he put both Whoa. Hands up. what? He's like, bro, do you know how many people I've killed? Oh, oh, that 
was close. Was, that was oh close. No. You went, ah, oh, what the fuck? How could they let this happen? This is so fucking embarrassing. This is so embarrassing. You know what's really funny? Because like everyone's like, oh, Justin Trudeau, what a fucking idiot. He did that, right? Like everyone's dunking on him. And then like, including even the NDP, you know, shouts out, you know, I, I listen, uh, Jugmeat, uh, I've, I've supported him before, you know, he's my homie, but I'm sorry, every single motherfucker in the parliament was, was giving him a standing O, including the conservative party, which was really funny because they immediately started cutting attack ads and people were like, bro, you're on camera celebrating what, like this. They were, like this guy did a standing O. Yeah, he, he was like, yeah, like the guy who was doing this fucking five minutes ago is now tweeting on Twitter being like, Justin Trudeau, you're a fucking idiot. Like, I can't believe you brought a Nazi Dude, into the, our parliament. The best part is that the the authorities in Poland are like, oh, we found him. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> isn't that crazy? Uh, That's the we part found that really him. we need him. Yeah, wait till like, you find oh out. God. By the way, that Justin Trudeau's deputy prime minister, Christia Freeland's grandfather, is a Nazi collaborator who she openly is aware of and, and knows and and has defended to this day. I I don't think you can write this shit. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it, it does have an air of like Kirby like enthusiasm. Doesn't <laughs> it? Really? Why? Uh -oh. Why are you being like that? Alfredo, he wants to play. Uh oh, he wants to play. Here, I'm gonna put you down. What's your uh? Wait, 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 wait. Cut. <laughs> what are you afraid of? Yeah, he's, he's scared. Cagey. Alfredo, why are you being so? What's um? You had a or... you had a nickname for him when he gets like that. Alfrico. 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 That's right. He goes Alfrico mode. Yeah, he gets Alfrico. <laughs> but he's usually really sweet with dogs. Yeah, Kai is a, a is a is a big so baby, big. so she that's probably big. why. That makes sense. She's a big girl. Hey, come over here. Here, I'm gonna put you down. Come cuddle with me. You guys are you guys can be friends, Alfredo. You guys have you guys have met so many times already. Kai just wants to play, Alfredo. <laughs> I know she's she's scary because she's so big. She's just a baby. It's okay, Alfredo. She is a baby. She's, she's a big a baby. Just a big baby. She's a friend, Alfredo. Yeah, she just wants to play. I'm so worried when she gets her first period. Oh God. Yeah, it's gonna be a fucking massive issue for me. It's okay. Right. She just wants to That's play. That's the thing you gotta deal with, it. isn't it? I'm gonna have to get her diapers. She just wants to play. Oh, that'd be kind of cute, at least. It, it in apparently a way. Wait, goes. You do you get diapers? Yeah, Dog bigger dogs but especially. So big. Yeah, bigger dogs especially. Like they bleed a lot, apparently. Wow. I mean, her shits are like it's human okay, size, so I suspect that her <laughs> period will also be human size. She is eighty pounds. You're right. gonna drive all the dogs at the park crazy. No, I, I'm not gonna There's let her be, out. Like, dogs will be running from like blocks. Over. No, the, she actually. The problem is that they get aggressive, from what I understand. In the first like, really, week, yeah, they get like really, really violently aggressive against male dogs, and then in the second week, good, good, um, good job. They get aggressive towards female dogs uh, when they're ready to mate. Kaya's laying down with Alfredo. See, that's very sweet, Kaya. You see Alfredo? She's she's big, but she's nice. She's big, but she's nice. It's okay. It's okay. Good boy. You did it. You facilitated peace. Let's see though. Alfredo, she's so nice. She just wants to say hi. Ethan the diplomat. Give it up. That's soft power right there. Flexing. <laughs> Good boy, Alfredo. See, she just wants to lay with you. How nice is that? Okay? Right? Um, Kai's not the best with little go. dogs. She she always wants to play with them. Like uh, she's really good with big dogs. She'll play with them all day, every day. But little dogs don't want to play with her. She's really big. Yeah, <laughs> hey, Fredo's a little cagey too. Since Shredder passed away, he doesn't know how to act because he took all of his. He doesn't have his leader Shredder. anymore. He feels a little like leader of the pack. But uh, anyway, uh, that was a fun little. Uh, I'm random, enjoying it. I want to random it. side journey that we took with like uh, Canada's Nazi oopsie. <laughs> Can we please continue? Yeah, no, I want to watch it more. And, I uh, hope they extradite him to Poland. Gallery, but How can they know. not? Oh they'll, no, Cam. <laughs> well, How Canada. Can they not? Canada does not like extraditing people to, to what, what are they gonna say? foreign no, we're countries this famously. We're gonna, I think in this case they yeah. might make an exception. <laughs> That'd be really funny, dude. I hope it happens. I hope he gets hanged, dude. That'd be. Fix that, or is that like a technical issue? It's a technical issue. Okay, hold okay. on. We've got just a little technical issue here. We have some technical issue. It sounds what like. What do we do about it? What are we gonna do? Side.
All right, fuck. You me. want justice to be served? I don't know if I got it. I might have waited. Too I think it was less than twenty seconds. <laughs> you want I was, was kind of watching is, the stopwatch. Justice to be served, uh, and if the uh, if the punishment for it is is capital what? punishment, then maybe that'll happen. It's out of your hand. There, that's a more so, diplomatic so what way is of the, saying what. What is the buttons. punishment? And oh, dude, decided. you literally buttoned in right after. Like I just saw it. Oh no! So I said, I hope he gets hanged. Dude, uh, now you just said it again. But well, it, it, but right. it's, but but he's a Nazi. Can't we hang Nazis? I mean, historically, yes. That's what we do. That was what the whole <laughs> Nuremberg trial. trial. I don't know. I was okay, just I, is, listen, Nuremberg, Nuremberg, said that. What, and I was what like, did they do with the Nazis in Nuremberg? Is what did they do with the Nazis in Nuremberg? We're, we're, talking we we're talking about the Nuremberg trials. We're talking about the Nuremberg. We hung them, man. Justice, he, what Ethan's trying to say is that hopefully justice is served. Who's going to complain? Ethan's being mean to Nazis. Try that. You really, you really think in in our liberal landscape, motherfuckers aren't gonna come at you and be like, "Wow, <laughs> wow, he wants to hang Nazis." Well, he wants to we'll kill this ninety-eight-year-old man. Who look at how pleasant he is. He just got a like, standing O. You know, and I'm not huh. even talking about like, "Oh, you're a Nazi." You're, no, this guy was literally a member of the Nazi well, party. Well, I'm sorry, did he? Like, I'm not even. This isn't like an interpretation. I agree. I'm just. YouTube is a little crazy but about I, what, the whole I, didn't, I didn't even say I hope. I said it'd be funny thing. if they hang him because he's so old. In my this would be the wildest way to get Very. banned. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right? Like getting a strike over this would be that would be something. Yeah. He's at the top of the mountain being applauded, and then he's gonna go right to the Dude, he's right <laughs> in the gallow. The balcony floor yeah. is gonna fall out under him, and he's no, gonna he, hang. No, he flew way too close to the sun, dog. You can't uh, be. You can't be that confident. Like, what are you right. doing? You were a fucking Nazi. Like a Bro, he wrote a blog post like at at eighty. Like, you know what I mean? Like this motherfucker wasn't hiding it either. You know. This, That's the this, craziest part. He's like part. a vampire. He stepped out into the sunlight, thinking it wouldn't get him. Yeah. But you know. Like, thank you. It's it's your move, YouTube. It's me or the Nazis. Yeah. You decide. <laughs> well, people, people say oh, the yeah, button YouTube failed. YouTube famously has always sided against the Nazis, Ethan. Right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I can't wait Nazis for a sponsor to be time. like, your your comments about killing Nazis, you know, to hanging Nazis. <laughs> <is very disturbing. laughs> a protected group. <laughs> yeah. We were it's talking about crime. the historical events of the Nuremberg trials. <laughs> what happened? Like, what we were doing. Yeah, it, it'd be really funny. It's like, uh, BetterHelp.com wants everyone to get access <laughs> to, to therapy, including Nazis, which is why that was not very cool of you. <laughs> you know, um, the thing is that I don't, I'm not pro-hanging. Hanging's barbaric. I don't think it should happen to anyone. I agree. If anything, he should just be thrown off a cliff or something. <laughs> Which is less oh barbaric. Boy. We'll see you all next week. Yeah. You just fly. All right, Midsommar, Midsommar style. And when they don't die, you hit them with the fucking sledgehammer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, that's good. No, but like in terms of weight, I mean, if you throw them off a high enough <laughs> click, then it's just lights out. Yeah. And you have time to reflect, you know, maybe I shouldn't have killed all those people. <laughs> time to regret. Yeah. Hanging is barbaric. Yeah. It just right. sucks because you can't go back in time. Damn. Like he already lived that moment where he was like, "Damn, like, did we win? Like, what's happening right now?" <laughs> right. right, right. <laughs> I really hate to say this. I think there's someone hanging right there. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but the Canadian Parliament be like, Logan, when did you become the Canadian uh, in the Canadian Parliament? <laughs> you do that. But I'm very proud to say that he is from North Bay and from my riding of Nipissing to Miskaming. He's proud, dude. What are you doing? This is my favorite thing that's happened this year. It's so funny. Look at how happy he is. See, this is why I say, like, and, and, is, and I don't is, know how, but, like, <laughs> I, my, I feel like he couldn't have known. He couldn't have known. I, 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 I still think he should resign. I mean, obviously, that's a, such an embarrassing... No, dude, I'm yeah, telling he's done. you, I know exactly what it is. I'm telling you, it's the anti-communist <laughs> fervor that, like, people get so invested in where they forget that, like, there was a time when, you know, the USSR was aligned with the Allied powers and was, you know, doing great stuff in terms of killing Nazis, you know? Yeah. So... World when record you, holder. When you forget <laughs> that, uh, you, you know, when you... When you're so swept up with like anti-communism, anti-socialism, and like you're so fucking aggro, you forget that like you're aligning yourself with Nazis, and then you know that also leads me into the development of NATO. When Germany was brought into NATO, they literally took German Nazi generals and put them in charge of NATO, right? Like because they were the most rugged, uh, experienced. They had the resume. 
Yeah, they had a resume of, of anti-communist they had a great uh, battles. So this, they, they put them in positions of power. This is my face at the Nuremberg trial when they hanged the Nazis. I see. I, see. I don't know. I'm trying. It wasn't on the screen. I, I thought it was going to cut to oh, either okay. Kevin James or or the Wait. chiropractor lady. <laughs> That's what I should have yeah. done. Yeah. That's what I should have done. No, You're just having so much fun, dude, <laughs> with the Nazis. He's a Ukrainian hero. A Canadian hero. What, what am I? Yeah, hey, what, oh, yeah, I'm the worst person. Remember when the United States government invaded Germany? <laughs> yeah, right. they killed a whole bunch of Germans. Yeah. I just want to hang one Nazi. No, not. I don't want to do it. But I yeah, I mean, technically, you're right. They, I mean, they, on the I, scale of take it they easy, were pretty man. good. On the scale of things. <sighs> yeah, you, want, you want only one, not as many as the American scale. Well, I'm saying, <laughs> you know, uh, yeah, it's just like a little cleanup. It's just a little follow up. Yeah, maybe let's um move on. Let, let's get on to yeah. this. By we the way, about, it, we were talking about Jordan Peterson. What happened? Well, well yeah, we well, we're, talking about we're talking about another Canadian Nazi. We're talking about a Canadian Nazi. Literally said basically what's happening right there, but he 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 verbalized it in a in an even more mm -hmm. clear and concise way, where he was like, "Well, you know, USSR is worse <laughs> by worse than the Nazis, and that's not." That's a tough competition. I just have to say that guy looks so fucking proud. Yeah, no, he <laughs> is. Zach was dying there. <laughs> He's like, we did it. Yeah, he had the we did it Joe face. <laughs> <laughs> we did it, Joe. He got all these people. Like, look what I've done. Listen, oh, boy. Fucking Nazi. Uh, Listen, um, if I get in trouble for saying that, I'll happily take a break. <sighs> Yeah, I mean, like, I guess. What's the expectation there? Like, YouTube's like, hey, when you come back from your break, you better not fucking say no that Nazi <laughs> Nazis should right. be no Nazi criminally hate. tried and yeah. then at the end of it, maybe face uh, capital punishment for their crimes. Right. Yeah. Or, that's, you know, of that's killing. I hit the button. Stop right, pushing. On. Stop Don't push. push. No more pushing. I just wanted to we make that clear. right up to the edge. I just wanted to make that clear. Yeah. I'm only talking about members of the Nazi party. That's it. He's Getting not feedback that maybe I should just let you cook so we get a break. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. We all need a break, man. <laughs> you know, Why does hard. the studio today smells like, like buttermilk waffles? It's my coffee. Is it, is it the coffee? Was some, somebody might have been cooking. Somebody smells cooking? Smells awesome. I've been cooking. I think on all this Nazi shit. I think it's the coffee. This Sorry, is, coffee. by the way, this is his face after the gallows is done. Okay. <laughs> oh, oh, <laughs> dude. Okay. Oh, this video is so. You saw. You know oh, this of one? Of course, dude. I hate the chiropractor videos. Yeah. Oh my god. I, I have. I'm doing a war against chiropractors. I think they're the biggest quacks alive right now. I think their whole profession should be fully on board with everything you're you. saying. I mean, it's just they're these guys are just scammers and they hurt people. Yeah. They paralyze 100%. people. Look 100%. what he did to this poor woman, man. <laughs> I don't know. He's treating like... her like a ex Nazi party member, man. <laughs> okay, okay, let's move on. I wouldn't even subject. Him I should to have that never shown this to you. God damn it! I, <laughs> I'm, I take full responsibility. I'm sorry, everybody. All right, Jordan, go ahead. Go ahead. Strategy. So that's uh, why you think. You think so that your stupid thoughts can die. Shut. What? You think so that your stupid thoughts can die? He's so. He's such a skilled orator. He's so powerful. Love it. Instead of you, oh, okay. if you get to the upper echelons of she's any bored. hierarchy, she's got her phone in. She was bored. She was like, dude, she's reading tweets. You see that? Look at her phone. Think so that your stupid. You ever seen a serious my queen? She can do no wrong. You, if you look at this phone placement, it's interesting. <laughs> oh my God, you're right. How did browsing. you catch that? She's what like, the fuck? Well, I don't know. I mean, what the fuck is that? <laughs> She's like, I need, mm -hmm, uh, dad. Mm -hmm, yeah, mm -hmm. right. You know, I, I did not notice it because I'm not a misogynist. And I thought she was in deep thought. Right. Well, I just looked at it and saw it. And you were looking yeah. at her eyes. I was here. looking at her brain. Yeah. I'm so much less misogynist <laughs> than anybody. I, I was looking at her soul. <laughs> yeah, like Shallow How. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, what what a great reference. I'm saying, great movie. Real. People say Shallow How is misogynistic. Like you. All right, what? Stop, 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 stop. Let's watch. <laughs> To the upper echelons of any <laughs> upper hierarchy, echelons. you'll start encountering people who know 
a lot about almost everything. And so if you're stupid and you don't know anything about anything, they're just going to look at you and listen to you for like two seconds and think, well, I don't know where this clunk came from, but, you know, he's not come along for the ride. You need to be enculturated so that you can play with sophisticated people and you can play a sophisticated and productive game, but also so that you've informed yourself with the greatest ideas of history so that whatever what? problem you're tackling, you're going to have tools to tackle it with once we get it well developed. Damn, we'll there's... To... Okay. I'm not Wait, understanding... Uh, we're going to we're gonna learn... So we got to talk I, about these people to be sophisticated. I mean, those are all... It, it, it's just the list is a little light, I feel like, but, you know, there's, there's a lot of other sophisticated people that Jordan Peterson has uh, declared uh, firmly in the uh, Frankfurt uh, uh, school of thought and and is um you know they're they're doing uh, cultural bolshevism well he doesn't say cultural bolshevism uh he or he says uh uh what does he say fuck no cultural he? marxism yeah cultural, yeah right marxism yeah yeah uh -oh. take all these courses and then you know you won't be a complete embarrassment to yourself I didn't enjoy my university experience. The really? professor wasn't interesting. I was like, I'm pretty sure what they just said wasn't true. Yo, oh, she's so bold. Oh, she's, she's so, so brilliant. Because they lived in cages. Literally, that happened. She said, hold on, hold on. Hold on. Wait, what? Wait, professor what? Tell me rats weren't social creatures because they lived in cages. Rats weren't social creatures because they. Okay, so what? I, mean, okay. I love the I that, love the presentation. Can I have some here? context? <laughs> Rats will dance for money if you. Pay <laughs> I love the presentation of this because there she's like saying like I googled something that my professor said and I found out that like you know I got the woke mind virus like I found out that my professor was like lying to me about rats and being social creatures, which, by the way, we have no idea if that actually happened or well, not. Like yeah. I'm pretty sure there's more context than that. Her professor's yeah. like, did you know rats aren't social creatures, you guys? It's really funny to say this to Jordan Peterson because Jordan Peterson Literally gets like, pretty what? much everything wrong uh, all the time when he tries to talk about things that are completely outside of his field, where, like, whenever he tries to talk about, like, animals specifically uh, to, to reinforce, like, this... Uh, you know, fallacy, no gay birds. This this uh, natural uh, this, this naturalistic fallacies. Uh, he he often forgets that you know the animal kingdom is gay as fuck, for example, or even very queer, very trans. Or when I saw, I saw my two male dogs having sex, man. I mean, they they got off big time on that. I didn't even have to leave my home to see it. Yeah, they love that shit, man. They go dick <laughs> to dick, dick. You know what I mean? All different dick to I did whatever. Not fuck my dog. All I just knew there was only two dicks and lots of humping. I did not come on my dog. Here, okay, all right, all right. <laughs> not traveling 40 minutes to go to this class. And I think it's cruel that people are told they have to go to university, they have to spend $100,000 to $200,000 to get a degree so they can get a job, otherwise they're screwed. It's just a scam, but it bothers me that people are being scammed to learn to not believe in themselves. I, in a sense, she's that right that college has become a scam, but what's the best part is they're going to be like, Okay, so let's not do that scam. Let's do this scam. Yeah, let's basically. do an even bigger scam than like at least accredited institutions. Yeah, this one you get nothing for. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's great. I mean, this has already happened. Obviously, Barry Weiss did this with uh, the the Texas. Uh, <laughs> what the fuck was that? She did one in Austin, Texas, basically, uh, and and it, it's a massive failure so far. But like I said, I think the the cynical, the cynic in me looks at this and thinks. There's a profit motive. Definitely. And I think that the reason why they're doing these like unaccredited institutions is because they believe that like uh, the next wave of uh, conservatives in positions of power will just offer them fat government contracts uh, to, to just churn out like right wing agitprop that they will pump in our schools. Jordan seems very motivated on, by money. I've, I've seen and heard him say certain things. Oh, where I was, I was like, man, this guy seems like solely motivated by money. Yeah, well, ah, there's another motivation out there. It's called benzos. <laughs> well, mm -hmm. and yeah, those ain't cheap, man. When you got a heavy <laughs> habit, I'll tell you what, boy. You know, what's a stick run on the street? Like 20 bucks? I fucking don't know. Aziz I don't know what the stick, rate you know what I'm saying? <laughs> it would this, be funny by the way, if we could. This is my face when, um... <laughs> I finally find out I don't have to go to college, but I can just go to Jordan Peterson's college instead. Uh -huh. Oh, God. It's so cursed. That's the Nazi. <laughs> He's having such a great time, He's dude. He's so happy. Blow apart the university system a little bit because Whoa. it's broken. Mm -hmm. Because of what it did to you. 
Like you were alienated out of your job, basically. You'll be damn fortunate. He's still milking this shit, man. My favorite bro, thing. Bro, how is he milking? Six years ago, bro. I'll tell you how. Crazy. My favorite thing. This is what Trump does really well as well. He takes personal grievances and people like slighting him for behaving in an inappropriate manner in like polite society. And he turns that into like structural critique that like the elites aren't simply saying, no, you're not allowed to be in our circles because you're, uh, you know, you're, you're rude mm -hmm. or you're kind of gross. Right. Uh, it's not that that's happening. It's actually uh, that like elites have disdain for me because I'm in the, uh, I'm a part of the working class just like you. And Jordan Peterson has done this very well as well. He has a way of communicating his own personal grievances that is absolutely motivated by uplifting his brand, uh, where, you know, he just wanted to be fucking transphobic. He's got a lot of, like, backwards, right-wing reactionary ideas that are outright either ahistorical when it comes to plenty of the uh, historical background that he offers with respect to, like, Nazis and, and, and socialists and whatnot, or reactionary when he talks about the, the biological predeterminist uh, opinions that he has about, like, male and, and, and female uh, social hierarchy and how they Lobsters are supposed to cohabitate spaces. So those are genuine opinions that he has, and he's a stubborn asshole, as uh, most professors are, and he won't <laughs> give up. So inevitably, there's like going to be a lot of people that were protesting against him, and he and and he became further and further openly, more and more openly right wing, and now this this personal conquest that he has against like University of Toronto and all these other like. Uh, acad uh, academic institutions that have, uh, you know, banished him in his words, uh, he ne he must attack back. And the best way to do that, the most effective way to do that is by saying, they're not just after me. They're after me because uh, they're after you. I'm just in the way. Right. Classic is, Trump phenomenon. Great. And I mean, I don't know, man. He's still talking. This would be like if I was still complaining about YouTube demonetizing my Joey Salads video five years ago or some shit. It's like, I don't know, man. It's just time to move on a little bit. <laughs> and if you literally made a killing off of that, you know what I mean? Right. If you made like right. tens Joey of Salad, millions of Joey dollars. Joey Salads University. <laughs> yeah, if you made tens of millions of dollars over the course of this past like half a decade and, and became profoundly oh, successful... Like, went from a relatively uh, unknown... The aggressive can opening I've ever heard in my life. Uh, yeah, all right, because I shake it. Oh, you do? ...can provide you with a list of people who've graduated. And if you had any sense, you'll employ them preferentially because we this... did the rigorous screening work. I know how to do the rigorous screening work because I studied that. For this like is a Tim months. Heidecker what? character. <laughs> Isn't it? Yeah, that delivery was insane. But he said, so his, th his theory is if you come to my school, you're gonna get yeah. The, your employers are gonna look at your de your <laughs> pseudo degree from Jordan Peterson University and hire you immediately. Yeah. Also, this he's saying I'm take gonna, my word for it. He's gonna say I'm gonna screen people that are allowed in. Like, bitch, you're gonna take money and let anyone in who wants. Shut up. <laughs> are you kidding me? But look at this Tim Heidecker sketch. You'll be damn fortunate if we can provide you with a list of people who've graduated. And if you had any sense, you'll employ them preferentially. Right. Because oh, he's speaking to the employers. I know how to do it. I know how to do it. Because I, studied I did it like myself 25 for 25 years. years. A degree from our university <laughs> will signify. Bro, he's a confidence man. This is just a con. Very and and those are very. And the difference is like, important. unlike Andrew Tate, he's like not even entertaining. It's for. He's Andrew Tate for uh, the the he's Andrew Tate for a different generation of people who at least want like the the presence of pseudo intellectuals like Andrew Tate at least is like straight up you know he's like women are bitches they're whores you should kill them with a knife or whatever the fuck he says right <laughs> whereas like Jordan Peterson will will go on these like convoluted tangents about how like we simply do not know how women and men cohabitate in spaces like we haven't had you know. Hundreds of thousands of years of development on that front. So um, this is launching in November of this year. That gives them like basically one month to finish this. And this to me is looking like WordPress first day of a website, isn't it? Huh? Like what the fuck? Yeah, yeah. it's not yeah, looking definitely. totally complete. Like what's the deal with Generic, these stock photos? Kind of just on the like top? texture stock art up there. That's Learn from the world's best. <laughs> How to think? Not what to think. <laughs> How much do you think they're gonna charge for this? Dude, it's gonna be a lot. It's gonna be a few thousand. Cause that's it, you know, you have to make them feel like they're getting something valuable. Awesome.
Because if you just charge like ten bucks, then it, then oh, good point. It won't feel like a real education, right, like know. a real school, like like it is. Exactly. Um, anyway, that's taken a long time to get through. Like, here's Tim Pool's Russell Brand take. I don't oh. know. Is Tim Pool getting dumber? Um, he's becoming more dumb and more hateful to the to the point where what's this guy's name again? Oh, Andy No. So Andy No is like <laughs> somehow the voice of reason in this clip. He's That's pushing crazy. Back. Yeah. No, that really tells you where Tim is at this point. Tim is lost. Oh man. my God, Listen. Andy No. What a, what a name. I, what happened to this guy? I thought he was like being attacked he mercilessly got, got by mil- Antifa. He, he got, got milkshaked milk- into oblivion. Yeah, he got milkshake so hard he almost died, and then it wasn't and then, milkshake. It was a <laughs> no. it was a cement. It was an advanced cement compound mixer. Yeah. 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 Alien tech. By, uh, it's just weird because like they stronger. went to court for that, and I'm pretty sure he didn't win that court case. So I guess justice is on the side of Antifa on that front. You know, Antifa judges. They took the dub. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, here's Tim Pool. On Russell yeah, Brand. So, right. So I, I have I, criticisms, uh, you know, going well, I, so many I, directions here. I reject all of the uh, accusations and allegations against Russell Brand. All right. Thank you. I, well, that's a that's an enlightened position. Done. Yeah, that's a nuanced take from okay. Tim Pool. I appreciate that. Oh no, he won. I thought I thought he lo- he lost one lawsuit and he won one lawsuit. He won 300k from defendants who ignored lawsuit over Poland uh, a Portland protest beating. Wait, what did he win for? Um. Andy, yes. He Not won. Really, no. He won Andy one of up. the lawsuits, and he lost the other one. But what? So what did he win on? What did the judge find? This is such a funny thing because if you look up Andy No court case, there's yeah. like three articles on. There's like Fox News article saying he won. A, he scored a legal. Uh, he scored a legal win, and then the Civil Liberties Defense Center is like Andy No loses lawsuit. All right, we'll look at. We Portland can... jury finds no fault for two activists at trial. Let's look into it. I want to focus on this Tim Pool clip. Okay. He says, no matter what, I support Russell, which is beautiful. I mean, it's, it's, it's a pattern. In, but in, one of them went to a rape crisis center. Oh, no, Andy. No, 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 no. Don't say that. Bring that up. Yeah. The time. And, and considering the political state of this country, considering the actions being taken against them, considering the motivations of the press, sure. But sure. I won't. Well, yeah, she, went, she did a rape Sure. Hit. Fine. Whatever, you know. Sure, this happened like well, four years ago before he worked for, the, you know, before he even pivoted into right wing griftum. Give the benefit of the doubt. Sorry, not nope. happening. Bitches it's be just lying. There, there, there's, it's not there, a benefit it, of the doubt situation. He just he's said. not giving her the benefit of the doubt. He says, okay. I don't believe women, straight up. Okay. Women be lying. <laughs> right. There are so many they bad. They be shopping, they be lying. Bad people and criminals who are getting away with everything. That mm. what we end up seeing is <coughs> law enforcement choose to go after certain people yes. when it benefits them politically. Yes. That's the exactly. nature of the West. Why aren't we going after the bad guys instead of uh, investigating Russell Brand? We cannot do both in this vast, vast country with thousands of different police yeah. departments and federal agencies. Famously, the the British police is it, it doesn't have any like well documented investigations on how they have routinely no uh, thrown aside or engaged in victim blaming at the at a systematic level in rape cases uh, in the UK. Certainly, certainly, no such uh, thing has existed. Look at this. I'm this, being sarcastic. The, that that did happen. Um, the the <laughs> the British oh, police right. uh, had to investigate the British police. Because of their, uh, you know, routine misconduct in sexual assault cases. This is not worth the effort, in Tim's, uh, in Tim's uh, opinion. This is, this is Jordison uh, uh, Academy here, guys. It's basically just a, um, what do you call those videos where it's like, girl dates. Cut. Dude. The cut. cut he's, line he's, up. he's doing cut. He's charging for cut videos. <laughs> you yeah. know, you can watch those for free on YouTube, man. I love that the top. Response is a question. Is it accredited? No, no comment. No, 51 no weeks. Comment. No comment. <laughs> Let's not talk about that. Yeah. <laughs> and then the second one. Nice. Uh, yeah, man. This is great. Wow. Yeah, it's huge. So when I see 20 year old accusations, it's Brett Kavanaugh all over again. Sorry, don't care at all. You want to investigate, you want to prove it? By all means, please do 20 so. 20 year accusations. You prove it a- in court, fine. I get it. But now. Well, well, yeah, none of these are. First of all, that's a separate thing. Obviously, I believe that if somebody raped someone twenty years ago, especially someone under the age of eighteen, 
Like she was saying, that's what they always they keep ignoring. They go, they they always do this. They go, yes, it's gross to have sex with a sixteen year old, ignoring the whole that thing that he he raped her and yeah. groomed her, all yeah. documented. Yeah, that's uh, it's it's pretty wild, but also expected, you know. Conservatives are pro uh, pedophilia. It seems like. I mean, when have they not been? Like, I think like it's just straight up. Man. Conservatives. Part of the, the difference between like libertarians who will openly say that like the age of consent law should be abolished <laughs> or whatever the fuck, like the New Hampshire Libertarian Party uh, Twitter account, who's run by literally a woman dating a fucking convicted pedophile who's in prison serving a sentence for uh, child endangerment, okay? Sometimes they'll be open about it. Sometimes they'll engage in the, actually, it's a phoebophilia, so it's okay, uh, <laughs> argument. Uh, but others, the more mainstream conservatives, will oftentimes defend not direct pedophilia, not direct, like, uh, sexually assaulting minors, statutory rape, but instead will say, well, you know, child marriages are uh, a, an adequate formation. Like, it's much better than, like, other forms of, of fucking children. <laughs> you know? <laughs> it's like, why are we getting into the weeds of this? Like, you can't what? say it's bad. Like, it's, it's fucking, it's wrong. It's fucked up. Nah, you're wrong. Tim, dude, look at his samurai sword. Shut up, dude. Like, I'm not one of these, uh, like, I'm not a Zoomer, so I, I don't uh, constantly talk about, like, problematic age gaps. Like, if someone is 25 and the other person is 26, like, what's going on there? Is there a power imbalance? Like, I'm not one of those fucking weirdos, right? A lot of people love uh, uh, having those arguments. But, like, pretty good rule to be, like, 18 and under, you know, don't touch that. That's weird. Go That's gross. Some? It's illegal. Fuck you. All right, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. People and criminals who are getting away with everything, that what we end up seeing is law enforcement choose to go after certain people when it benefits them politically. That's the nature of the West today. So when I see 20-year-old accusations, it's Brett Kavanaugh all over again. This, this idea that it's a political hit job is just endlessly funny to me. This man gets 80,000 views on Rumble. He's, he's The only thing he's a threat to is like... Uh, well, he gets a lot of views on uh, on YouTube, and, and now stuff. more than before, by the way, because he's been canceled. Yeah, but that'll go back down. So, the thing is, like, are you are you advocating to like to not have to to have a statute of limitations for like child endangerment? Is that what's going on? Because that's not very QAnon of you, my guy. What's happening? You know, that's he's like, oh, the statute of limitation is out the window. He's guys. actually about to go much further than that. He's like, listen, if I can rape someone and get away with it for 20 years, that's it. I got away. That's Scott Free, baby. I made it to the finish line. Those are the rules. Those are the rules. You know what I'm saying. Go on a raping spree as a young man. You'll be fine. Yeah. Sorry. Don't care at all. <laughs> you want to investigate, you want to prove it, by all means, please do so. You prove it in a court, fine. I get it. But now, does anyone actually even believe these courts? You got Donald Trump. Bro, See, how, why are that. you living here? You, you go, we don't, oh, we don't believe the court. We don't believe in statute of limitation. Right. How are you existing in this world, bro? Isn't that crazy? Like, usually the conservative line or like the Russell Brand defenders, it's like, oh, it's fucked up that he's losing his uh, YouTube monetization before he goes to trial. He deserves a day in trial. Tim defensible. here is saying, yeah. even if he gets to trial and is convicted, I still don't believe. Because we don't trust the courts. <laughs> yeah. We don't trust the courts. It doesn't, it doesn't even matter. Or again, sorry, don't care at all. You want to investigate, you want to prove it, by all means, please do so. You prove it in a court, fine, I get it. But now, does anyone actually even believe these courts? It's awesome. You got Donald oh. Trump and that story that... Yeah. yeah it doesn't he, even matter. He created, he's innocent. He's innocent. He created a, a, a perfect loop where he's like, investigate it in the courts if, you, if it actually happened. But also, I, I don't even believe the courts. I don't believe the so, courts. So there's no way that you can find... Russell Brown, uh, uh, Russell Brand, criminally liable, and for I refuse anything. to read the article. I just won't read it. Yeah, I mean it's <laughs> it's it's a it's a so cool crazy. it's a cool way to make like I guess a a, a, a logically consistent article or a logically consistent argument in your own brain in your own like weird logical I, circle that you've closed. I, that I, woman I, in New York. I understand that, that he's just you know. He's just appealing to his audience, but like, just read it, man. I'm telling you, you'll be you're gonna be embarrassed if you just read it. Really bad, dude. And he went to that department store. Which Carol department? E. Jean. Yeah, right. What was the department store? Uh, Bergdorf Goodman's, right? Yeah, yes. Bergdorf Goodman's, and it's the busiest place with the most it. famous. Man. Wait, he's going back to Trump assaulting this girl in a dressing room mm -hmm. as proof that Russell didn't do it. Yep. 
Bro, what are you doing? And also, like, again, you're conflating this is a 20-year-old accusation with Russell that apparently just did this, like, four years ago. It was, I think. It was pretty... No, the all of the incidents were from longer ago than that. Oh, okay. It, I think what you're thinking of is a few years ago is when uh, behind the scenes it started to come out and his co-star it wasn't 20 years called ago, him out right? and everything. Well, no, I think it was... Not that it matters, just for the record. It was like 10 to 12 years ago or so. I'd like to these. talk to Tim. I've Tim never Poole? talked to him. Because he is just a moron, right? I mean, he really is just dumb. Um, I think he's a, he's a better propagandist than uh, we give him credit. Uh, I think that uh, in a lot of instances, uh, especially with Tim Pool's uh, situation, you're tailoring your message around the audience's expectations, needs, and lack of interest in like learning a different side of the story. Mm -hmm. uh, an example I will give you is this. Kyle Kalinske yesterday was making fun of the Trump fraud case mm -hmm. where uh, a New York uh, judge found that Trump artificially inflated or fraudulently inflated his assets by $2.6 billion dollars. His total assets were around $1 billion. He inflated that to $3.6 to get more favorable loans from a bank. This was fraudulently done. One aspect of that was uh, putting the price point of Mar-a-Lago at $700 million. Mm -hmm. Mar-a-Lago's actual price, actual valuation is $70 million. Mm -hmm. But if you look at the surrounding region of Mar-a-Lago, there's a lot of small houses on much smaller plots of land that are worth $40 million, $50 million. So why is Mar-a-Lago only worth $70 million? This is very confusing. Until you find out that there is a land deed restriction mm -hmm. that uh, stops appraisers from looking at Mar-a-Lago as, uh, as a residential real estate property uh -huh. because you can never put residential real estate on Mar-a-Lago land. This is something that Trump has used mm -hmm. to, to actually... Uh, uh, pay less taxes year over year when he's talking to the IRS, right? So what did Tim say? Tim did the classic thing that conservatives do and was like, look at the houses around. You think Mar-a-Lago is only worth $70 million? You're a fucking idiot. It's totally worth $700 million. He, didn't he say $1.5 billion was um, worth? It was, no, no, no. I'm saying like that's just one of the many different properties that he lied about. Like I'm he, saying Trump said Mar-a-Lago is worth $1.5 billion. Um, I don't know it's if even more said psychotic that. of a lie. Yeah. Well, the point here is not necessarily Trump lying about uh, his, his assets, but more so about Tim Pool and others knowing full well that uh, if they investigated a little bit further, which I'm sure Tim did, uh, they would find out that the, the land use uh, restrictions on this deed for Mar-a-Lago uh, made it impossible for Mar-a-Lago to be valued at $700 million. And that's part of the reason why the courts found it fraudulent. Um, but well, Tim also, knows like, he can just point to like yeah. the dumbest thing that everyone else around him uh, that sounds normal <clears throat> and sounds uh, like a good argument if you haven't investigated the situation further. So he'll just point to that and move on well, with this, it. This what I'm saying is like he's good at talking to his people, but like yeah. if you're in a debate with somebody who's prepared and you say that, then it's like he he can't justify his position. I don't think it'd be easy for him to do that, which is why I think it might be. Yeah, but when you them. but when you do that so much, when you do that so much, so frequently, um, and the only types of debates you have are in person in your own compound, because Tim Pool and I were supposed to I'm have not a going to his compound. That's yeah, Tim Pool and I were supposed to have a talk during COVID, um, and 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 like he did this with Sam Cedar as well, where I was like, yeah, I'll do it over Zoom. Like, I don't want to go to your place. Yeah. I, I, you know, I'm not going to do that. What the fuck do you mean? Why, why would I give you clout like that? Like, well, you know? who cares? You don't need to fly there to talk to him. Yeah. And and Zoom was perfectly appropriate. He he does maintain the position that I told him I would be down to do it, but only on Zoom. Um, And, and he doesn't want that to happen. He wants you to be on his own home turf. Uh, uh, like, and, and I'm not interested in doing that at all because I'm not going to take time off uh, just to go and talk to Tim Poole. But I'd be willing to talk why to him. Why don't you come to my office, bitch ass, coward? I don't. I don't think he would do that. Well, then why the fuck should anyone go to his dumb? But I office? think we could do it via Zoom. I'm the bigger dog, Tim. I got more views. My cr I got more crew members. It, They're it's cooler. It's not even. It, it's not even about that. Well, then what the fuck is it about? It's more so about boy? having you um, in a controlled environment where you can get like multiple uh, lines of attack from different people. Like he did right, this with right. Emma it's, too. That's true. When I sit at the table with him, it's like a six against one. Uh, 
But anyway, I don't know if we're cooler either, to be honest. I don't own a, I don't have uh, a samurai sword. On my I don't have an 18th century uh, pirate pistol either. I do. Oh, do you? Yeah, I have. Oh, well, you're I, cool though. I have an MK18 Daniel Defense. I have uh, a, a Glock. I have multiple katanas. Wow. I just think it's funny that he's like, Sam Cedar, Hassan Pike are cowards for not coming to the show. It's like, oh, do you want to come to my show? I would never do that. Yeah, it's it's okay. very odd. I mean, I'm I'm perfectly willing and able to talk to Tim uh, at any point in time, uh, as long as it's on you know conditions and terms that I'm comfortable with. I'm not gonna like quit my stream to go fucking fly he's, to his yeah. compound and his hang out with his sweaty friends. Like I don't want to do that. His audience doesn't <laughs> care if it's on Zoom. Everybody would watch that. Yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah, be so man, awkward. arguably in the city, nobody he owns saw. the hotel next door. He owns the hotel next door. Nobody <laughs> noticed. Donald Trump with no security yep. going in the second floor, I think it was, and and then and then a New York jury finds Donald Trump accountable, liable for for th this uh, this assault or something. Sexual assault. This is why yeah, he believes Russell Brand, by the way. This is him. This is me <laughs> trying to get him to read the article. You just won't look at it. You just yeah. won't look the at beanie, it, man. The beanie's stopping just him. read the article at least, brother. Insane. That's insane. All right, shut up, dummy. Shut up. That's Tim Pool, everybody. We love him. Thank you. Um, um, we should probably we gotta skip ahead. Yeah, yeah cuz uh, so Trump organization you touched on this, but this is pretty spicy Actually, this is like mega spicy. This is like nuclear a New York judge ordered the dissolution of whoops Of businesses owned by Donald Trump and he did everything right. Uh, he yeah. did everything right, and they're indicting him again. Uh, he's been found to have committed fraud in terms of uh, declaring his net worth in uh, loan documents, which is a big fucking crime. That's a serious shit. Uh, the judge found that Trump and his company fraudulently misstated the value of their assets, canceled any cert and canceled their certificates for business, as well as any entity owned by Trump, Eric, Donald, or Alan Weisberg, or Trump Organization Executive Jeffrey McConney. That's pretty serious, dude. The ruling implies that Trump Organization is no longer recognized as a company, company in New York. A court-appointed individual will take over its assets and distribute them as deemed appropriate. Dude, that's crazy. That's crazy. So what he's been doing, essentially, is getting tons of loans, which billionaires do. But the problem is he puts down his... Uh, his assets and his collateral to guarantee against the loan. He's been saying that mar lago for example, just one example, is worth 1.5 billion, right? I saw it said it's 700 million, but I thought it was, he said it was 1.5. There were two instances here. I have, uh, I have exactly where the judge breaks down what they found. Uh, here, highlight it uh, for me. Here is this one. Yeah. So, so, oh yeah, here's the judge's um, ruling on the matter. Let's read this. From 2011 to 2021, the Palm Beach County Assessor appraised the market value of Mar-a-Lago at between 18 million and 27 million. Notwithstanding, the F, the SFC's value did not reflect these lands' use restrictions. It says it very clearly, actually. Donald Trump's SFC values Mar-a-Lago between 400 million and 600 million, an overvaluation of 2,300 <laughs> percent compared to the assessor's appraisal. The best part is when he is. Actually, like the difference between him going to a bank versus him going to the federal government and the IRS and like showing his properties is the exact opposite. So like he's undervaluing it every single time he's talking to the government and saying this is a depreciating asset. Look, right I here. have land use restrictions and this is like a piece of shit. Look right. <laughs> but when he goes to the fucking when he goes to the bank, he's like, this is in this is the greatest fucking place of in all 2020. Time. Donald Trump sued the the uh, municipality because they overvalued the property because he wanted to pay less property tax. Listen to this. Yeah. Tax representatives acting on behalf of Trump filed a petition this year to state authorized value at judgment board challenging the evaluation assigned to Mar-a-Lago and the Trump National Golf Club in Jupiter, according to spokesman. Uh, the petition for Jupiter property was subsequently withdrawn, said agency spokesman. A virtual hearing has been uh, scheduled for December 3rd to consider Mar-a-Lago's valuation which at 2.6 million is unchanged from last year. No, 26 million. 26 million. Yeah, it's not 2.6 million. So, so um, but here it says also the judge wrote, critically, 
Uh, Moans does not opine at what price he is confident he could find a buyer, although he opines separately without relying on any objective evidence that he believes that as of 2023, the property is worth $1.5 billion. That's awesome. <laughs> so um, a couple of things that, to note here. Uh, I think one of the scariest and most insane things that Trump actually dropped in the deposition that suspiciously is not getting a lot of media coverage is that he said he basically has an unlimited line of credit from Saudi Arabia that he could he just that. sell. Yes. That's what the, that's what a footnote. Uh, that's what the judge says. He said in the deposition, I haven't seen it, but Oh well, yeah, I definitely trust the judge. If he, that he's well, that. he basically says I can sell my properties for, you know, 10 X, 20 X, whatever the fuck I want to Saudi Arabia at any given moment, which technically isn't, False. He is right about that. Saudi Arabia did give Jared Kushner, Donald Trump's uh, son-in-law, $2 billion in the uh, Sovereign Wealth Fund uh, for Jared Kushner's new venture. Uh, and that obviously came with, uh, you know, that didn't come for free. They, like, they didn't do that out of the kindness of their hearts or think they didn't do that because they think Jared Kushner is like an incredible fucking investor. They did it because they like having an inside guy. They like having control over. I mean, uh, it's, it's exactly what uh, they accuse Hunter Biden of doing. Frankly, yes. Except, except it's what Hunter did is even less direct. Yes, because he unlike, wasn't even like unlike, serving as his yeah. advisor. Unlike Jared Kushner, Kushner Hunter Biden, Hunter Biden never had like he never had any fucking sway in the Obama administration, nor the the Biden administration. Well, the Kush was a, he's an avi official advisor. He even had security clearance for a while. Yes, he was, he, he did the fucking, uh, like, he, he facilitated the, the Abraham Accords. He was Mr. Israel Peace. Yeah. So, yeah, he was put in an incredible position of power with no fucking background. That's sick. Now, that's a bribe. And he like, fucking, I, see, yeah. I gotta say it to his credit. I see people getting bribed. And it's always too little money, like the fucking the moron, the Democrat. Bob Menendez. Yeah, like, <laughs> Menendez. like what? I mean, he got a couple he, gold bars he got paid, but like Jared, he got one point five. Yeah, billion. he made out like a now, fucking that's bandit. A bribe. Two, two billion, two point five billion. No, just I think two billion, roughly. Two billion. That's two billion a bribe. in Saudi Arabia. MBS recently because he's doing the 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 he's doing his charm offensive again because yeah. like enough time has passed since the Jamal Khashoggi shit. So, like, uh, you know, he's back on U.S. soil talking about, like, you know, the golf courses and how awesome it is. He gave an English interview to Fox News this past week where, where in the interview he basically said, uh, yeah, we gave $2 billion to Jared Kushner and, you know, we'll probably give him more. Mm -hmm. And that uh, he loves the idea of another Trump presidency. Nice. Um, well, <laughs> anyway, according to... Um, <laughs> According to the documents reporting, he apparently overstated his worth to a in assets to banks and insurers by as much as three point six billion. Did you see the Saudi Arabian oh, line no. in the deposition uh, that they just pulled up? Here, there it is. But in a deposition, Trump seems to imply that the numbers cannot be inflated because he could find a buyer from Saudi Arabia to pay any price he suggests. New York State Supreme Court Judge Arthur Engeron wrote in his ruling. Despite the uh, disturbing uh, suggestion, that is, that's not how um, evaluations work. That's just not how it, you're like, no, trust me. I could find a buyer. I know a guy. I know a guy. That's not how it works. <laughs> you know. And I mean, obviously there is, uh, you know, the market on top, like uh, Eric Trump, uh, and we have that in the doc here at number six, was uh, trying to argue, it's ridiculous that the judge was saying it's worth uh, 26 million or whatever, because look at how expensive all of these other properties in well, Florida are. Exactly, Well, dude. he says one thirtieth the size. So what he's saying is these are, their properties worth 30 times whatever. Yeah. No, but he's, he's right uh, and he's wrong. He's right that the properties next to Mar-a-Lago are residential real estate properties that are going for that uh, that amount, right? It, mm -hmm. it is to show the the market consideration for real estate in that area, but those are residential properties. While they are tiny in comparison to the massive plot of land that Mar-a-Lago sits on, they do not have land use restrictions that specifically detail that you cannot use Mar-a-Lago as a residential real estate. You cannot chop up Mar-a-Lago land to turn it into residential real estate. So you can't do that, which the Trump, uh, the Trump organization knew 
and as you also correctly showed, has used to their advantage year over year in an effort to pay less taxes or actually show Mar-a-Lago as a depreciating asset so that they can cut Write taxes in general. Yeah, We yeah. knew about all of this because Donald Trump literally... Uh, not the not the uh, uh, the the overvaluation of his properties, but we knew about uh, Donald Trump undervaluing uh, his properties and showing them as depreciating assets. Dude, just in 2020, he was arguing that it's they overvalued it, it. because <laughs> because of the whole Trump tax return shit. Remember when we were talking about how like Trump paid seventy five thousand dollars in tax, and we were like, "What the fuck is that about?" Yeah, yeah, that was because of this because he was openly stating that his uh, land use restrictions were making was making Mar-a-Lago a depreciating asset. Dude, the the brazenness, like if I I feel like if I tried that shit on my taxes, I would get fucked immediately. Yeah, you got to cut the candle like on both account, ends. Any accountant I've ever worked it. with would be like, "That's fucking insane." I'd be arrested if I signed off on this. <laughs> well, yeah, like, but then I don't you know can do the Trump thing. You can do the Trump thing and like go accountant shopping until like <laughs> the one accountant will say, "Oh yeah, no, we can do that." <laughs> yeah, I guess we'll people. find a way. But I'm trying to see how much of the property is unusable. Um. From air, you know what I mean? Like, how much of it is just totally un... It's like a, it's like a country club, essentially, yeah, right? Yeah, So, like, there's, like, a, it's kind of a hotel in there and stuff, and, like... Nice spot, though. Oh, this is the whole area. This is his plot. Yeah. Yeah. Which, when you look at it, they're, this like... This is all unused. Yeah. And you cannot turn that into residential real estate. Right, you you can't, can't do that. can't build on it. You cannot sell or use this land for any commercial yes. purpose. Therefore, it doesn't get... Any no, for any res residential purpose. Yes, right? it's, a co it's commercial real estate. The reason why it's only valued at $70 million in comparison to like all the other properties is because those other properties are houses, right? A house has upkeep, especially ones as large as that one uh, uh, in that area. But like Mar-a-Lago and the upkeep required for it is a, 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 an insane amount. So obviously that's the reason why there is a there's a limitation to how much you can uh how how expensive you can uh, claim this thing is mm -hmm. and how valuable this is. Shame he owns this cuz that shit looks nice. <laughs> I look, I've never been to to what is this Palm Beach? Palm Beach. You never Is that been. what it's all like just this Dude, peninsula? Dude, it's shit, I think. Really? I've never I, it, been there. It's one of those places where it's like yeah, I mean, it looks like it's going to be underwater and like Oh, that's no question about it. Right. In like 10 years. There is that too. I, it That's probably hurting the property value too. Bro, look, it looks like it's under sea level. Like, <laughs> this looks like a seawall. Yeah. That's true. I mean, how much is that shit worth? It's not going to exist in 10 years, probably. <laughs> Enjoy it while you've got it. It's a narrow strip of land. Okay. Well, there he is. So Trump is getting absolutely fucked, dude, by uh, New York State. I and did everything right and they <laughs> I don't know what to me. say. I mean, the guy committed fraud on a massive scale. What do you want? The craziest part about this, too, is that um, this was all over a civil trial. He was being sued uh, by, uh, what's it called? The, not district attorney. Was this a attorney discovery General. thing? Huh? Was this a discovery thing? Well, it's not just that. It's it's the fact that it, this was supposed to go to trial, like, next week. And the judge, after looking over the evidence, just thought it was so egregious that they were willing to dissolve his business before even going to trial. Okay. Like that's how like on its face obvious it was that he was doing this fraud. Yeah. There's like, there's different uh, types of fraud uh, aside from like, obviously hyper inflating the value of your, of your assets. But like he lied about the square footage. <laughs> that's so stupid. Yeah. Like that's, that's so measurable. <laughs> lied yeah. about the square Doesn't footage. Doesn't get much more measurable than square footage. It's literally. Yeah. Literally a measurement. How do you lie about that? <laughs> I mean, yeah. I guess you, he lies about his height though. <laughs> That's even more measurable. Yeah. Uh, it, it's just, you can get away with it, right? I mean. <laughs> yeah, so the interesting part of this is to see which banks and loaning institutions are going to sue him for fraud. That's going to be real fun to follow. In I mean, it, it, it entirely depends on whether or not he becomes president. Because if he becomes president, he's going to give them favorable uh, deregulation. So they will not do that. And they love that. Mm. Um, true. So, you know, we'll see. We'll That's see which way, which way this goes. Like, a lot of this... The, okay, I have two conflicting thoughts on this. On the one hand, when Trump says, like, what I've done is not out of the ordinary, he's not wrong, okay? Real estate and the way that uh, the, the real estate industry works is this is all not necessarily legally permissible, 
but things that a lot of people do all the time and completely overlook. Lie about their assets? Yeah, depreciating. Yeah, depreciating the value of your, uh, depreciating, like showing your assets as depreciating assets in an effort to get, uh, in an effort to, to significantly cut your tax burden while simultaneously showing it as, that, as much as you can. That is common. But like lying to loan institutions about the value of your of your assets, that seems crazy. I think not to the degree that Trump did it, but I yeah. and, and not with like, you know, lying about your square footage and whatnot. But yeah, I think people do it. People yeah. probably people definitely there's do a difference it. between fudging, fudging a little bit. Right. Fudging, which I found is probably very not, common. Not, yeah. Not and what two, he did. Yeah, they, not two thousand yeah. three hundred <laughs> yeah, yeah. percent. This is, this is like brazen. that's insane. Definitely. Yeah, that's crazy. Um, All right, well, let's move on. We don't have a lot of... We have about 30 minutes, so let's keep it moving, right? You got something else you wanted to close it out on? There's a lot of stuff that we can talk about. I don't care. Well, I want to talk about, talk about, about the, the debate. debate. We can debate. talk about uh, the UAW auto strike that's going on. We can talk about a lot. Let's talk about the debate as in... Let me look at the title. We got. Those two kind of flow into each other because of the uh, Trump connection anyways. So why don't we so, get those two? The debate, which again, Trump wasn't at. He won. Boring. He won that debate last night. Well, what's interesting is that... <laughs> All the debaters are lower in polling than the, they're all just, they're being worse. They're just losing by being there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They look uh, unserious. They look pathetic. They look terrible. Uh, <laughs> overall, I think like Nikki Haley, maybe, uh, uh, in my opinion, did you watch it? I watched clips of it. I heard yeah. people like that she did well. Yeah, Nikki Haley does a decent job. It's very interesting, though, because, like, every time she speaks out against Trump, it's almost in a way where, like, Joe Biden can use that against Trump as well. Because, <clears throat> mm -hmm. like, it's always, like, you know, how much Trump imploded the deficit, right? Like, mm -hmm. things of that nature. Um, but I think she is probably the smartest old-school Republican that is, like... Uh, clear with her message, still ruthless, still brutal, still awful. But uh, in comparison to the rest of those fucking losers, like she comes out, uh, she comes across as like at least uh, relatively intelligent. She went after our boy Vivek. Vivi Vivek. Oh yeah, Vivek had I he, think ache like cake. The biggest uh, L's. That's he, good. I'm glad to hear that because I, I would get L's. tired of that guy. And hey, please come on our show. Um, Vivek <laughs> no, he ghosted us, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. yeah. Vivek and Ron DeSantis Howard. are in the same camp where the more they talk, the more people go, oh, you're gross, and yeah. I don't like you. <laughs> and obviously, politics is a lot... I mean, politics, for the most part in America, especially now, is like very vibes-based, right? And if you are coming across like a smarmy, annoying <laughs> debate pervert who's constantly going, ah, actually, uh, the Constitution says I can do this, like, then, you know... It worked the first time. Television watcher. No, it actually didn't. People he, loved him. No, he, he time, saw huh? a little bit of a boost initially because he was like riding Trump's dick so fucking hard. He was doing tricks on. He was blowing bubbles on that shit. But then eventually, <laughs> the more he like had to defend himself in a defensive posture in mainstream media, the more his uh, approval rating started plummeting. Um, After the debate, I saw a lot of people being like, mm, this guy's full of shit. But anyway, here's how the debate started. Let's take a look. <clears throat> thrilled to be sitting alongside my co-moderators, Fox News Channel Dana Perino and Ilya Calderon. Cal uh, uh, Ilya Calderon is my goat. She's woke. Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> hold on. I gotta go on. back. Perino and Ilya Calderon. Cal uh, 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 Univision. <laughs> what? <laughs> Univision. <laughs> I think he surprised himself that he got the pronunciation correct. Yeah, he hit that Calderon. Yeah, and then he would like kind of stumbled after that. He's like, yeah. shit, I nailed that. Smooth, man. Smooth sailing. Calderon. Cal uh, 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 Univision. Dude, that was rough. That was rough. He made it. He's, <laughs> he stuck the landing. He stuck the landing. I mean, it yeah. could have been worse. You remember Jesse Wellen? <laughs> oh, oh my God. Jesus. I haven't thought of that in so long. You remember, remember that, his son? Wait, what, what happened? Do you remember Jesse Wellen's, the, the YouTuber? Uh, Jesse Wellen's at the game. It was uh, E3. 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 Yeah, E3. Yo, this is... All right. I got to go back and enjoy this real fast. This is bad. <laughs> Dude, Legendary. Every, I man, haven't thought of this in so long. That was a no. good year for content, I feel like. <laughs> What up, guys? <laughs> Thank you for having me, EA. If you guys don't know who I am, my name is Jesse Wellens, and I am a YouTube creator. So I am here to 
talk about Need for Speed um, Payback. Uh, if you guys didn't know Need for Speed Payback, I'm. Um, oh no. Yeah, it's a great game. But all right, all set aside. Bro, people from I'm Philadelphia creator, can't read, dog. What the fuck? Coming out. I got my boy just, Marcus, executive producer here. He I believe this firmly now. Game. Thank you, Nick, for having me. <laughs> hey, man. Thanks, Jesse. Um, obviously, we're really excited to tell everyone about Nip. That was. I love that he's uh, so aware that he fucked he up. He is. Yeah, we actually had him call in. It was pretty funny. He said no. He like, came in in person. Oh, we talked about in. it. And yeah, we in. talked about it at length. How embarrassing he, it was for him. He said uh, <laughs> the teleprompter was off and the cue to turn around was off. Yeah, there were some production issues. It wasn't totally his fault, so, but... OG uh, yeah. Prankster. Yeah. Yeah, shout out Prank versus Prank. Yeah. You know, he lived with... Uh, I think he lived with Andy Milanakis for a while. Do you know yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. I remember, they were, they I remember were hanging out with him uh, way back in the day. Like, uh, randomly. So, let's see. Um, yada, yada. Chris Christie, our boy. Back from the buffet <laughs> for this epic thing. That's... that, And that's... That's Trump's <laughs> words. Not mine. That's my. That's his words. Whose words? Trump's. Trump's words. He does the right, buffet okay. guy. Don't I call him a fat pig. Right. Yeah. You can't do it. Oh. And I won't. And I won't. I won't. So, oh. So here we go. Tell me what Who you think about this. Who wants to look at this fat right fucking now and tell you, Donald, I know you're watching. You can't help yourself. I know you're watching. Okay? And you're not here tonight. Not because of polls and not because of your indictments. You're not here tonight because you're afraid of being on the stage and defending your record. You're ducking these things. And let me tell you what's going to happen. You keep doing that, no one up here is going to call you Donald Trump anymore. We're going to call you Donald Duck. Oh. Oh. Has this name thing gone too far? <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Donald Duck. <laughs> Bro, that, that, oh God, oh my God. <laughs> if I was ever ashamed to have he was uh, been from yeah. New Jersey at any point in my life, this is the worst, op this is the worst time. You kind of hit the, uh, the Kevin James smirk at the end there. Really Bro, you know his ass practiced that in front of a mirror, You're, okay? Well, yeah. It was like, he probably spent a hundred thousand dollars, like, in marketing, uh, gurus to cut, to formulate. <laughs> they workshop that. Yeah. <laughs> You're ducking these things, and let me tell you what's going to happen. You keep doing that. Look at that Kevin James face. <laughs> no, there's yeah, a little bit longer. Right, right, yeah. right Donald, after he hits him. Trump anymore. We're going to call you Donald Duck. Oh, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> got him. Donald that's that, Duck. That's that Christy face, dude. Like, I, I, I like the, in theory, but calling someone Donald Duck is just... It's just, Donald Trump's Duck. just going to call him Porky Pig. <laughs> <laughs> well, Trump literally said... <laughs> or he'll just tell him to kill himself or something. <laughs> I mean, he <laughs> did. Like, he Chris Christie should did. be executed. <laughs> he basically did. He What's responded on Truth Social. He says something along the lines of like, I, I'm pretty sure he says something like, uh, shut the fuck up, you had 5% approval rating. <laughs> <laughs> like, when you, by the time you left off, it's like, what the fuck are you talking about, Hold idiot? On. Send that. I want to read that. But in the Hold meantime, it. this needs to be a new chat emoji. <laughs> oh, that's pretty good. That's a good ass face right there, boy. <laughs> you know? So, um. <laughs> yeah, Porky Pig. But that's all, folks. That's all, Christy. <laughs> Thanks. No, no, not that one, Zach. That one's a classic, though. <laughs> oh, I know. I just, I just. <laughs> Chris Christie like, at Roy Rogers at 11 p.m. It's in the just the greatest thing I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, it's one of the best. You know what? I have to say. This photo is pretty incredible. There's <laughs> nobody else in it. It's it perfect. is late, and he is the only one there. Yeah, trying to console himself. Look at his head. Like, he's his head sunken in. I'm a fat pig. <laughs> oh, okay. oh, God, he is such a demon. It's crazy because uh, I talked about this last night. Um, <laughs> big boys are, are doing really well in the polls, like... Big boys across the board from John Fetterman, J.B. Pritzker, you know. Yeah. Like, it's big boy season. <laughs> and and yet Chris Christie has not seen Chris Christie has not seen a single piece of that big boy action because he's so pathetically unlikable and is basically running in the Democratic primary uh, while while actually running in the Republican primary. Like all of the messaging, all the messaging he engages with is like, are you trying to be the fucking Democratic president? Like, what's happening? He only goes on CNN. He only goes on MSNBC. He's just trying mm -hmm. to get the liberal vote for some weird reason. I don't know why. I guess he's just trying to get a CNN job. He just wants, he just, yeah, he just wants clout. 
Yeah. I mean, it's probably going to translate to a lot of money for him in terms of whatever book deals, show deals. I don't know. I'm trying to find that uh, Trump response to this, but Truth Social is seemingly down right now. So, uh, oh, no. How yeah. can this happen? Oh, That's wait. The... It finally loaded. I kept refreshing and it popped up. I'll try and find this tweet. Anyway, meanwhile. Um, um, yeah, it's on the Hill if you want to. The Hill? Okay. Yeah. It, While it, you look for that, here's um, DeSantis. Saying Donald Trump owes it to you to defend his record, where they added 7.8 trillion to the debt. That set the stage for the inflation that we have now. Joe Biden uh, responded. In action, Donald Trump is missing in action. He should be on this stage tonight. Ah. He owes it to you to defend his record, where they added 7.8 trillion to the debt. I oh, yeah, it's smart. You, you have use same, what he do you, said. Do you share the same disdain that I do for California Republicans? Like the most annoying, in my opinion, like one of the more annoying type of Republicans. Like I'll talk to a fucking racist ass Alabama Republican all day, every day. Cause like I get where they're coming from, but like the California Republicans irk me. Who are you talking about? The people that are in that room right now, because this is oh, in this. Simi Valley at the Ronald Reagan library. And it's obviously, I don't know all, a lot of them, but I know they're all, all California Republicans in there who fucking want California to be Florida so bad. It's like, just move the fucking Florida dipshit. Well, I know that when I go to like orange County, I just see a bunch of MAGA voters, but I guess, yeah, I see why they want it to be Florida. They already live in, like, the most Florida part of California. I just, I hate them so much. I have so much, I have so much passion in my heart for, for California Republicans, like, all four million of what you. What should we do with them? We should send right. them to Florida. I have talked about this so many force, times. Should we force them on a train to Florida? Yes, bro. Put them on a fucking train to Florida, okay? <laughs> Trail of Put them uh, on, beers. put them on, yeah, no. Take all their assets. They can live in a libertarian utopia, build a wall around Florida, and routinely fly in there and extract babies out of Florida to make sure that they are not suffering the consequences of living in this fucking libertarian ANCAP dystopia in Florida. All aboard! It's going to sink anyway. Speaking of, speaking of ANCAP dystopia, whatever happened, remember one of the first episodes of Leftovers... We talked about um, Glenn Beck starting like his own like little nation. You remember what I'm talking about? Starting. I don't even remember nation. that. It was like like a, like you, a Micronesia he, type he, thing. Like a, it was like uh, what's the what's the utopia from uh, Atlas Shrugged? And, uh, he wanted Glenn to do Beck. that in real life, basically. I don't remember that. Uh, I'll, I'll Gulch. I'll find uh, it. What I'll, is it? I'll something Gulch. I'm I'm forgetting. Yeah, the something name. Gulch. Gaunt's Gulch. Got, got uh, something like that. Stupid shit. You know, you, you fly into it. It's like Wakanda. Yeah. <laughs> it's like Wakanda. It's Wakanda for cryptocurrency Gulch, pedophiles. Gulf's Gulch. Thank you. Gulf's Gulch. Um, so let's see what else we got here. Thank you to uh, President Joe Biden. Wake up. Uh, here is Nikki slamming uh, oh, Vivek. Up. And it's pretty, it's pretty like, <laughs> like I, I don't know. I feel like. If I was in a debate or argument, if I said this, I, I wouldn't say this, but I guess it doesn't really matter. I mean, I, this came off to me as like, whoa, chill, but. Listen, this is, what you're about to show is Daisy on Daisy violence, and I'm going to tell you something, it was, I was here for it, Nikki Haley popped the fuck off. <laughs> I just, I would think that, I guess it's a different breed. I feel like if I said something like this, people would be like, whoa, dude, in but a debate. The, Every time I hear you, I feel, yeah, they would be like, uh -huh, ad hominem, yeah. which is, I'm shocked that Vivek, who is such a petulant little child and like such a smarmy little debate lord, he didn't hit that. Ah, that's actually an ad, ad hominem. Hom, ad hominem moderators. Actually, Mods. But it is, it is a smart diss because I feel like his whole thing is like, I'm the smart guy. Nobody can say I'm not a genius. That's what everyone says about him. Right. And so she comes right for that. There's one person ahead, on please. this. Uh, this is infuriating because TikTok <laughs> is one of the most dangerous social media apps yes, that we could have. Agreed, and right. And what you've got, I, honestly, it. every time I hear you, I feel a little bit dumber for what you say. Damn, bro. They hear you've got a TikTok She hit it in such a way that... Bro, he's, he's, look at him. His pride is demolished. Yeah. Yeah. Like that, that, that cut for some reason. Just he something about the way on. she said that didn't come across. It was just, yeah. And the thing was like, people weren't like booing her. They were like, yeah, you're kind of right. I kind of. <laughs> like, yeah, he that. is pretty annoying, isn't he? Yeah, he got shitted yeah, on. I, honestly, every time I hear you, I feel a little bit dumber for what you say. <laughs> because I can't believe <laughs> no, they I hear you got a me. TikTok situation. No, no, no. What they're doing is. Speaking. There's one By the way, can I say Vivek looks like butthead? His hair is getting taller every time. I don't know what's happening there. Wait, like, Beavis or butthead? No, butthead. 
Pull up huh. a side by side of Butthead and and Vivek. They have the same like airline. I never airline thought and about that, shape. but I kind of immediately know what you mean. Yeah, they've got the dome shape. <laughs> Who would be Beavis? I don't know. He needs a Beavis. Mike Pence? Nah. Yeah, that's that's him. <laughs> <laughs> I can see it. I see the energy's there a little yeah, bit. I kind of get it. Thank you. Thank you so much. But yeah, um, here the the most accurate. Summarization of last night's shenanigans was uh, <laughs> who's going to invade Mexico harder? Right. Who's going to put a bomb in the Department of Education <laughs> harder? Like, uh, who's going to nuke it? You know what I mean? That's what they, they were like stepping over one another. Mike Pence came out of the gate swinging on abortion again because he's a actual psychopath. Like, I think Mike Pence is one of those like honest sociopaths, like honest right. to God. Like, they literally, abortion is the hardest and yet most important point of contention here in the Republican primaries, and it's going to, in my opinion, basically make or break the general, mm -hmm. unless the Democrats somehow find a way to fuck that up too, which, you know, they might. Um, it's a massive erosion of civil liberties. Republican women hate it. Republicans don't even like that this is happening. It is deeply unpopular in deep red <laughs> areas and deep red states. Anytime it's on a ballot, uh, you end up uh, uh, allowing Democrats to win by like, you know, like reverse Ronald Reagan margins. You know what I mean? Like it's crazy. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, that's precisely the reason why in the Republican primary debate, they put it at the tail end of the commentary, the tail end of the broadcast so that, you know, uh, less people pay attention to it. Um, they asked the abortion conversation, the question to like two people, and then they <laughs> redirected the conversation to Mike Pence mm -hmm. where they at the Univision lady Asked him, like, what do you, what will you do to earn the Latino vote or something, right? Mm -hmm. And Mike Pence was like, instead of taking this gracefully and going, oh, thank you for allowing me not to talk about abortion because I'm a psychopathic freak, took that answer and redirected it back to abortion to be like, no, we're doing a federal ban, <laughs> mm -hmm. which is insane because it's so incredibly unpopular. Mike Pence is like, he's truly one of these like uh, husbands from the Gilead. From hands ma handmade instead. Yeah, yeah, no, he wants like you know, he, he wants like breedable. He, he treats women like cows, mm -hmm. baby incubators. Here's DeSantis answering the abortion question. This election could come down to less than fifty thousand votes in three states. Abortion was on the ballot in six states in 2022. Republicans uh -oh. lost all of them. <laughs> Next year, bro, can you like stop oh, <laughs> making that face? You can't. <laughs> You can't stop. Can you please stop, bro. His advisor's like, bro, please work on this face. Look at you, man. He was. There were so many weird ones last night, too. Oh, dude. He's awesome. Next year, abortion will likely be on the ballot. What? Why did he do that? <laughs> he did the weird lick <laughs> thing. Yeah. Weird. Next year, abortion will likely be on the ballot. What? Ozempic face, dude. Oh, when that Ozempic <laughs> hits. <laughs> That's something else, man. Something else he's in on. Arizona. That is a must-win state. Governor DeSantis, how are you going to... This election could come... Oh, that was it. Just how fucking weird he is? Yeah. Nice. How are you going to win Arizona? Ah, like ah I'm pro-life. It's like, you're so fucked, dog, and you deserve it. You deserve to be fucked. The Republican Party deserves everything that, that's coming for them. Oh, God. I, I just... It's, it's deeply frustrating to see them uh, in this bind and, and not necessarily any, like, clear... <laughs> Uh, way out of this bind because they are suffering from success just like Khaled um, people is this is the one the last thing I want to show okay so DeSantis and Gavin Newsom are going to be having a debate for some reason now I'm looking forward to this because say what you about, about Gavin but he's very smart and he's very well spoken he's going to decimate DeSantis. I think so too. And, and it's going to no, be spectacular. He can't do any pushback. Like he's really fucking bad at at uh, the debate stage or even appearing like he's a human. Seems being. like he gets too mad. He gets like triggered. Yeah, which is ironic because uh, they're always the like worst on a debate to get angry. Right. But like he's doing Gavin the fattest favor because like Gavin's just getting more and more media attention. He's going to look like a genius, slick politician extraordinaire next to DeSantis. And um, listen, here's what he had to say about DeSantis agreeing to. Apparently, DeSantis has even been talking, talking spending, to my boy Alex. <laughs> he's spending money promoting this uh, this debate they're having. Listen, 
between you and Ron DeSantis, November 30th, Fox News Channel, Sean Hannity yeah. in Georgia without a crowd, yeah. uh, just the two of you. God, he's got beautiful hair, man. I can't deny it. He does. He's, he's so scared. he's so Stunning. fucking hot, dude. You know, he's got the voice. He's got the posture. He's got just, the hair. I, got I just the, wish he wasn't such a fucking neoliberal demon. You know what I mean? He's like the governor of the the bluest of states, at, with a eighty billion dollar budget surplus, and like, um, as as uh, I'm gonna fuck his name up, Eddie Edinger Mentum last night adequately put, he is to the right of the state legislature. Which is insane. Like, the California state legislature is literally more progressive, even though they are also, they could be significantly more progressive as well. And, like, gruesome Governor Gavin Newsom is 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 the most annoying type of uh, neoliberal. Well, but did you see his hair, bro? That's I mean, yeah, he's crazy. hot. He's hot. He's hot. No arguing there. I, I agree with that. That's like Why perfect hair, man. I mean, get out of here, dude. He's that's how be we, president. That's how we got Kimberly Guilfoyle, He's going to be president. <laughs> Sorry, no, he will be. No, he won't. With that hair, he's going to be president. No, he won't. Guaranteed. Big Gretch, Big Gretch, J.B. Pritzker. There are significantly better governors out I'm there. I'm not with saying less. he's good. I'm saying he's going to be president. No, I'm not saying I. I think I think the 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 problem with Newsom is that he's a Democrat from California. Yeah, which Until, to a lot of the country is a problem. You yeah, know what I mean. Here, Here's here. There's two different reasons. There's the fake uh, reason. Yeah. There's the fake reason why he will never be president, and then there's the real reason. Fake reason being that uh, everybody thinks California is a crime ridden shithole, and like it it has like insane crimes happening all the fucking time because mainstream media constantly pumps that narrative, despite the fact that California's violent crime uh, uh, rates are are lower than the national average, gun violence lower than the national average, um, and and crime in general is is not on the rise in California in comparison to other states. Red states are significantly worse on violent crimes, especially gun violence. Um, like, not even a comparison, okay? New York and California have lower crime rates than South Carolina and Florida. Suck my dick, everyone who fucking constantly cries about crime in California. So that's number one. Number two, that's the fake reason as to why he won't be able to, uh, you know, make gains no matter how... Uh, no matter how well he is perceived. The real reason is homelessness. Mm. Homelessness is a gigantic issue in the state of California. Once again, a state with $80, million, $80 billion of budget surplus, a state that literally has uh, launched initiatives time and time again, ballot measures time and time again that we voted on to ensure that we fill the coffers with adequate funding to create initiatives that are housing first policies. And yet he is so deeply uh in the pocket of real estate developers mm. and homeowners associations uh in this in this state that he uh doesn't fight hard enough to solve the homelessness problem and that's a very real problem that uh you will you can cut a thousand hours of propaganda off of if you were to ever run for president don't turn everywhere into skid row is what they would say mm -hmm. that's pretty good yeah it's pretty that's good. why most uh National Democrats, uh, I guess not n most anymore, but oftentimes are from more conservative states. Like Bill Clinton is like the classic example from Arkansas. You know what I mean? It's like that. It softens the blow of being a lib a little I bit. I see that. Yeah, yeah, I see that. But anyway, here he is just really dunking on DeSantis, his dumb ass here. That, and what is your strategy? Well, I, it's, I don't know if that's the right question. Why is he doing it is the right question. <laughs> He's running, I think. I'm not sure after tonight. But currently, he's running for president of the United States. Uh, and you, you think he's still going to be? A, you think he'll still be a candidate on November 30th? That's an open-ended question. Part of me wonders if, he, you know, uh, the fact that he took this debate, the <laughs> fact that he took the bait in yeah. relation to this debate, shows that he's completely unqualified to be president of the United States. <laughs> That's my humble first. Why is that? You're debating him with the debate off? Of course. <laughs> I mean, why is he debating a guy who's not even running for president when he's running for president? <laughs> he's showing up at the Reagan Library, hollowed ground, and he puts out an ad today not Ugh, for president. He ran an ad. To promote a debate against the governor of Dude, California. he ran this ad. And I guess it's too late to back out. Look at that. They got Sean I don't Hannity think, involved. I don't think <laughs> that, um, that gruesome is right. I think that Ron DeSantis is doing this because, like, the the American, at least in the hearts and minds of, like, the voters that matter, right, people that are living in the suburbs, which can go in either direction right now, the reality is that the, the point of contention exists between California liberals and California moderates versus 
Florida Republicans and Florida uh, moderates. It's it's the idea that like, do we want an anarcho-capitalist dystopia like we do in Fl- uh, in Florida, where uh, you know it's just like the state is sinking, or do we want uh, a a uh, supposedly communist, but actually just like a neoliberal uh, aesthetics focused? So you think it will help him potentially in his campaign? What if he does? You think it might help his campaign? Um, yeah, I think so. Okay. If he if he did well, but he's not going to, no, so it's not, not going to help him at all. It's going to look no. horrible it's for gonna him. It's going to be great for Newsom, I think. That's the only outcome. I'm going to watch this shit, though. They're going to get the ratings, boy. Oh, yeah. I will watch the fuck I'm out there. of it. And Sean loves Gavin Newsom. He does? He does. Oh. He thinks Gavin Newsom is hot. Johnny boy. Cool. <laughs> he does go on Hannity a lot, which is interesting. Yeah. In fact, he was inter- Hannity was interviewing him last night after the debate. Oh, this is going to be yeah. phenomenal. This is this is fireworks. Yeah, I think he's he a should- low-key stan. I think you should stick to fucking being the governor of a, a massive state that is like the economy, like the 14th largest economy on the planet <laughs> and fucking do his goddamn job and actually fix homelessness. He uh, can do a debate. I'm reappropriate. In. Let him have his fun He's just for like, me. But the point is he doesn't give a shit. Like, and there's no alternative because this is a deep blue state. So there's no genuine primary opposition. There's no interest. There's not enough money. These are like New York and California are, are, like the the headquarters of institutional democratic power mm. which is sad because these are the states where we could be making genuine gains in the right direction to show the rest of the country that we do have uh, a a method of uh, a successful method of moving away from I hope this that. insane late stage capitalist uh, hellhole I mean, we are doing more than other states, but I hope that we can do even more than that. You know, like something as simple as like uh, guaranteed maternity leave is something California just uh, enshrined in law, which nobody else has done. Yeah, there's there's stuff like that, which I, of course, always appreciate. Yeah, and passed some uh, new gun laws uh, last week, too, didn't they? I didn't. I don't recall that. Yeah, we're, our Someone, gun laws are are sometimes dude, a little crazy uh, and, awesome. and silly, but sometimes they're silly. But I mean, uh, but oftentimes is like very productive and healthy, and have yeah. uh, kept our our gun violence uh, much lower than the national average, which is a good thing. Yeah. Um. But on the front of like, uh, you know, offering material benefits to uh, the working poor in this state, yeah. we are horrible. That's a far cry from like housing people which is what i think we'd all like to see happen yeah because uh, nobody wants people to fucking live on the streets okay i don't want that like what the fuck <laughs> uh, nobody wants that that's insane and it's it's weird that like we just have to act like that's not a thing that's happening all the time and there's only two ways out of that you either like continue applying pressure to homeless people and like brutally suppress them kill them uh, you know draw them uh, push them into camps uh, outside of the, the city borders like Rick Caruso was suggesting um, or you house them mm-hmm. and start the the process of, of you know healing these people that have withstood a tremendous amount of this trauma. It doesn't seem that hard. I feel like you can make like so many of these little... But the housing market, Ethan, it's, it's not, usually It wouldn't that. even be... I feel like it wouldn't even participate. You're not house... Like you're making these little like not even it's like half a studio but it's got all you need it's got like the ac reappropriating uh the hotels microwave reappropriating they, hotels we do, do that in la don't we i know that's that's actually uh, one of the many initiatives uh yeah. the the uh project room key is what it's called mm-hmm. um yeah it's a great idea except the fucking chamber of commerce despises it because they think like uh they think that no hotel will ever recover from this um we rarely ever utilize eminent domain it's very frustrating uh, we, there is, uh, you know, there, there are so many hurdles in front of projects like that. And it, especially but we have the money to be like, we do, I'm saying, I don't think it's that expensive to build like a tiny little abode oh, with like the bare minimum necessities so that you're not dying and starving. Cal- the California economy does not have a money problem at this point. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. So no, confused our, about. we have a, we have, you could probably build one of those for like $10,000, maybe even less. Bro, we've scale. literally put billions of dollars aside that people have voted on. Okay, to specifically implement these initiatives, the problem is the money gets put in a fucking uh, the money gets uh, the 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 money gets put in a wallet and it just sits there because 
you can't even launch these initiatives because every single time you try to like build even a homeless shelter, which is like an inadequate solution to begin with, right? It's not even a good solution. It's demonstrably a failure in America. Even then, people lose their fucking minds. You do these like it, it look to any. Do you want to live Francisco. next to a homeless shelter? That's what you always hear. Yeah, and and for me, the Aren't alternative in, like, is industrial? like, what? It's better. It's still better than fucking having a, a dudes live outside of your house and like shit on your fucking front yard. Like, what are you talking about? It's like so cruel. And but, like, there's that's how all real estate is. There's some places that are more desirable than others, and uh, you know, you can move. You don't like it. But that's oftentimes what it comes down to is like local community groups protesting it and that. saying, no, we don't want but this in I our feel like you could get... <laughs> like, everybody wants the shelter, but nobody wants to live near it. <laughs> there's it's, it's there's so gotta be, up. like, a huge plot of land somewhere on the outskirts of Los Angeles. But I don't know if people would want to live that far. I don't know how that works either. No, that's not, that's not how you solve this anyway, because there's always new people becoming homeless. Because people don't become homeless because yeah, they they're come, bad people. You have like an office or a program where people can say, hey, I don't have a place to live. And then you take them yes. to a place where they have a shelter. It doesn't have to be in the heart of the city. But there's the, also the other side of the issue, which is something that people always forget. That's not... There's... There's two different problems here with homelessness, okay? On the one hand, you have the existing homeless person on the street. How do we solve that problem? How do we heal? How do we help that person? On the other side, you have people that are also becoming homeless right now. Both of these problems can be solved by decommodifying housing, okay? taking the necessary initiatives to make it as expensive as possible, as humanly possible to be a landlord and to own multiple uh, uh, multiple uh, residential real estate properties mm -hmm. um, and, and uh, providing adequate social housing as well. Mm -hmm. Because you need to make sure that people aren't getting priced out of the housing market so that there aren't new homeless people every day that are becoming homeless and living on the streets. So... We're not doing any of that, though. I agree. That's great. we're not doing that, and that and that requires you to build new units and not new units specifically, uh, uh, like as as luxury uh, condominiums Public that are housing. going to sit empty yeah. for fucking uh, a decade. You know what I mean? While you wait for uh, some Saudi sovereign investment fund to come in and purchase right. the rest of the units. Right. Uh, I mean, like immediately build social housing. We have the money, but that would depress the housing market in California. I don't and, see how. These, this is, what do you mean? There's it, enough people who are buying property. There's people who can't afford a place to live. It, it depresses it because now you have an alternative. You have an alternative. I don't think people are going to be like, I, I want to live in public housing instead of in like a, an apartment because I, if they have the means, I don't see that happening a lot. No, it's, well, it's scarcity. Scarcity is part of the reason why uh, the, the housing market is the way it is in Los Angeles and in these uh, yeah. big uh, real estate uh, markets. Yeah. Scarcity, Airbnb, for example, is yet another reason as to why there's more scarcity mm -hmm. because it's not being used as long-term viable real estate that you know, houses families. It's now being used as a, a substitute for hotels. So now um, you have scarcity because there's only a limited amount of land. And utilizing the land in a specific way, or at least zoning restrictions that they've created in these uh, real estate markets, is one of the many different reasons as to why this situation is completely uh, unmanageable. Uh, I'm not uh, like a, one of those uh, Yimby uh, weirdos who's like, like I'm not, I, I debated Larry Elder on this issue, literally, and he is like a libertarian Yimby who wants to just like keep pumping uh, investments and keep building uh, new housing, uh, new developments all around Los Angeles. But the right way to do that is by making sure that we have mixed income, uh, mixed income housing that can handle the density of the population. We have zoning restrictions, uh, single family For homes. sure. The zoning restrictions in LA are nuts. Yeah. Dude. That, that make it uh, impossible to, like to a overcome. Couple, there's like a couple square miles where you can build tall buildings. Yeah, for, for for residential, but yeah, I mean, listen, on both ends, it's crazy. I mean, the 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 fact that giant investment firms can buy up thirty percent of all houses on the market, which is what was happening a few years ago with like BlackRock, 
um, is, is yeah, can we just nuts. Can we just say you can't do that anymore? I like, think doesn't that just fine. seem like obvious to everyone, or, or at least like like I almost feel like that should be bipartisan. Like obviously not yeah. developers and like <laughs> people that directly benefit from this, but I feel like you could even easily get Republican voters on board with like, hey, BlackRock shouldn't own thirty percent of your town because and it's like it just well, seems so like obvious. Well, and it's like who this is benefiting like five dudes who like own BlackRock against the the interest of like whatever 10 million people that live in Los Angeles. I think it's more complicated than that. I think that um the 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 reality of the situation is that there are a, in the United States of America, housing is seen as the most viable way to develop uh generational wealth. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And it is to a certain degree true. This is why redlining was so uh <laughs> significantly discriminatory towards black people in uh, the Jim Crow North, for mm -hmm. example. And the problem is because of that, a lot of middle class working poor or uh, upper middle class individuals who have their houses for generations now um, due to uh, prior policy initiatives that, that were very helpful in uh, home ownership and, and boosting home ownership um, a lot of people do have a vested interest in maintaining their housing values. So the people that do actually go out to vote, those who have more capital than the prior generation or, or than the upcoming generation, they are the ones who do check the housing market, the real estate market pretty they, regularly. They because, think that because BlackRock is buying every house on the market, their property value goes up. Well, because it's not just BlackRock. I'm saying that like, no, this would genuinely, uh, this would genuinely to like take a, take a chunk of the net worth from not just BlackRock, obviously, but like legitimate single family uh, house I mean, owners. I, I'm not opposed to people having like two houses, like in the situation where you're like, we have this house. No, no, like, I'm not even talking about that. I'm talking about people who own one house. I don't like, see why I would necessarily devalue it. It will if there's more if there's more supply. Well we're, then, talk, well, we're just like talking if you, about if you banning. if you own a house and no, you have just, the equity but, in the house, even if it's just one, like well, you're benefiting about from the fact that supply. We're just talking about saying BlackRock, you can't own thirty percent of the houses in LA. That that won't that won't legitimately. I, I don't. That'll put a dent. It's like Airbnb. That's a good initiative. The BlackRock thing that you're suggesting, good initiative, but um, but all of this is still working to boost uh, the the prices of the available inventory of houses, mm -hmm. which uh, many people have taken loans against, many people have taken mortgages against, Yeah. right? So like, if their value, if their value declines, all of a sudden, they're in a tricky financial situation that will cause them to have a, a reactionary pushback. I, I can see that. why mass public housing could reduce the value, but I don't understand the limiting how much houses somebody can own reduces the value of the properties. Oh, know. just as far as, uh, well, because a lot of those houses sit empty, right? It's not necessarily that BlackRock owns a shitload of houses, it's that they just buy up a bunch of houses and let them sit and appreciate in value so that they can flip them for a profit after a while. So it's just, right, it's just that they own. It's that they're using. They drive the price they're, up. They're playing the real estate market for a profit, they right? And like, and like Hassan said earlier, it's it's about long term decommodifying shelter. Is yeah. I wonder just, if there's a way for the we government. shouldn't necessarily let these people be doing this with this fundamental. I don't think health, like, well, I wonder. I don't think healthcare is thing. the only thing that is susceptible to the the market forces of uh, of, of being in a, uh, an inelastic uh, <laughs> demand good. <laughs> I think housing should be categorized under a similar. Uh, in a similar fashion, because you know when they without do, shelter, you die. You have to get shelter. When you do gun bans, you buy the guns from the people. I wonder if there's a way to compensate single families who are right. And that is, there is, I guess that's why it's so hard to see movement on this because it is like the domino effect of all of these things is. There's got to be a way to. There, I, I just I'm I'm them, fully yeah. cognizant of how difficult of an endeavor this is. Is why I always go back to like talking about the average voter that owns like like the average voter chatters that are watching right now. Their parents, let's say, who've had their house since like the '60s, '70s that they're sitting on. Mm -hmm. That property value has skyrocketed over the course of 
those years. You might even have paid off all of your, uh, you know, you might own the house fully. And then maybe you took out a, a mortgage on it, right? It's got a loan against your house. If the value of that diminishes, all of a sudden your net worth is going down. So now <coughs> you feel like your nest egg is actually uh, in a, in a, perilous situation you're you're going to react to that you're not going to want that to happen which is why like it is somewhat authoritarian my my uh assessment of the situation is like build more housing don't fucking tell the public just do it you know <laughs> ironically uh chinese communist party style just like build housing and be like no nope, well, we just built it here shut the fuck up well another thing you could do is like starting now you can't do it anymore Grandfather it in. Just say, yeah, don't you don't do it retroactively. Just like starting now, you can't. Anyone who already owns it, we're not gonna we're not gonna touch. But going forward, you can't buy more than like whatever two properties per entity. Yeah. Oh, I I I like that. Well, then then you're giving a massive layup to those who already own multiple units, though. Right. But it's better than nothing. I, I think the better the better solution overall is to tax it so much that it is literally not viable to own multiple units beyond like the nest egg that you have that is like your second house that you're using as a as a as a vehicle for uh, capital accumulation so the people in the chat suggesting that we should just heavily tax empty units specifically that's a yeah. great idea because yeah. empty housing makes no sense it's disgusting it's like yeah. freak shit to just have it is pretty house. gross <laughs> yeah that that would be a great there's thing there's a massive there. warehousing problem in new york for example they make it uh they use I mean, these guys are real predatory. They use every legal move in the uh, positive direction uh, to their benefit. You know what I mean? Like, there'll be like rent stabilization in uh, certain areas. And if, if you have a rent control building, then you sit on it and you try to make sure that every single person living in those rent controlled units eventually leave, right? Uh, if you have a holdout, you're kind of fucked, but most people don't want uh, to live under like shitty conditions where the house is like not being, uh, uh, your, your unit is not being fixed or whatever, right? And then they just sit on it and they wait uh, and they warehouse that unit or make it impossible to rent because uh, there's like mixed income uh, housing restrictions that you have in places like New York where you build a skyscraper, a certain percentage of that, I think 10%, has to be like uh, affordable units. Specifically, they mm. usually have a second elevator for the poor's actually uh, <laughs> if you're lucky enough to be able to get into one of those units as a matter of fact because there's a lottery for it, but um, What they will try to do is like if there's new available rent controlled units mm. uh, That are in the market. They make it almost impossible to 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 get the unit Because they put like the fattest of down payments like you have to put like a down payment that's like three months rent, which right. if you are looking for affordable units, you don't yeah, have that yeah, kind of fucking money to begin with. Yeah. So they they use every initiative to their advantage uh, and and engage in regulatory capture, uh, but that's not you know yeah. surprising. All the people I know in LA that live in rent controlled houses are like, um, I would say doing extremely well and don't need it. Do you, you know that? Have you seen that? Like I know people that live in rent controlled houses and they're like. You know personally somebody yeah, that, yeah. that has that? And They've lived there for like five to ten years. You just years. stay there forever, yeah. Oh, yeah, they, and, and, they got they, more money. They, they're probably making a combined income of like, you know, over 200000 mm -hmm. I think that's pretty funny because it's like when you, it, it almost feels like when you take away one of the financial burdens of like the most significant financial burden, which most Americans dump half of their uh, uh, salaries into immediately. Off of those, oh right, God, right. that was such a nice conclusion of the conversation too. And uh, we, we were saying he that. says we need to decommodify housing. I said I totally agree. Okay. Then I said we need to blank. Nope. It's funny because like uh, there, there, just there's, blank, there's a know. clip of me talking to my friend at the time who was a fucking landlord out there from like five years ago when people always point to that and he's like he's a radical he's a radical and it's like no there is a there is an it's always the same dynamic of like constantly saying well what about if people don't comply with the law well then yeah the state is, needs to enforce uh, the rule of law like we do that every fucking day for the working poor why can't we do that for rich people ever 
All right. Which is, by the way, I wasn't the one who said anything about landlords. He was. Yeah. yeah <laughs> no, just I just want to point that out. I said, let's take them out. Here, this is what I want to do to landlords. Take them out to dinner and ask them to be reasonable with us and exactly. find a this is solution what I, that's amenable to all parties. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. <laughs> landlords watching this right now. Oh, God, here we go. Dude, come on, come on. I, I'm me, not saying Me, a landlord watching all right. this episode. We got to go. It's 1230. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Thanks for watching, everybody. Thanks for playing. <laughs> Spot the socialist. That's right. We'll be sending government officials to their house later today to re-educate them. Hell yeah. So that we can re uh, Rehabilitation, baby. I think it's very good. Re-education, reintegration here today re at the Leftovers Podcast. Watch out, Uyghurs. That's right. We got our eye on you. All right, thanks for watching, everybody. Thank you to Hassan. We didn't get to the auto strike. We're having too much fun, guys. Too much fun. Next But uh, we'll see you next week for Leftovers. See you tomorrow, everyone else on Friday. Much better Friday. episode tomorrow. Yeah, for sure. Obviously. Yeah. And uh, thank you, everyone. Have a great day. We love Don't we? <laughs>